situation we have here is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches, right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country? <laughs> I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Laden's son come here for the carnival, if, if you'll interview him, eh? But how can you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what would you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at Terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. What is television? It seems like a simple question, but television means different things to different people. We in the Caribbean are very unique people. That's why we need unique television. Welcome to m &E TV, where we showcase our lives in the Caribbean. m &E TV is about us, the special way we talk, the way we walk, dance, move. m &E TV is about me. It's about you. m &E TV is about our amazing Caribbean experience. Stand near you. It's the Guardian Lucky Number Draw. Your daily chance to win $1,000 instantly when you purchase the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian. It's quick and easy for your chance to win. A unique number will be printed at the back of each Guardian newspaper daily. Purchase your Guardian newspaper, then join JW for the daily Guardian Lucky Number Draw. The winning number on just before the nightly news on CNC3. If the number drawn matches the unique number at the back of your Guardian newspaper, then $1,000 thousand dollars is yours just bring the winning guardian newspaper and a picture id to guardian media limited you have until 3 p.m the following work day to claim your prize it's the guardian lucky number draw your daily chance to win nlcb approved Feeling isolated? Don't worry, we will bring the world to you. The nation's first and leading newspaper, the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian is extending a special home delivery for 30 days for just $99. Yes, yeah, yeah. for just $99, you can get the TNT Guardian newspaper, the fastest growing and most read newspaper, most credible and highest reader value, and voted tops for best publication by more readers than any other newspaper, delivered to your home. It's easy to subscribe to our home delivery. Simply call us now at 225 Four four six five extension 4274 and speak to one of our customer service representatives and we will bring the world to you. Week 8 of the Ascension Tournament live from the Arima Velodrome. My name is Jovan Ravello. Today we have Maruga FC versus AC Port of Spain, and I'm joined as usual by my co-commentator, Jassi Marie. Jassi. Good afternoon, Jovan. Good afternoon to all of our viewers. It is really and truly a splendid afternoon for football here at the Arima Velodrome. Great uh, crowd, cloud cover, and certainly uh, it's, a, it's a relief from last weekend's action here, which produced a really dry surface, really dusty at this venue, but today we expect uh, a slicker surface. Yeah, and those teams will be really appreciative of the rain that we've had in the East Trinidad today. So let's hear from them and their plans for this afternoon's match.
you know any, any uh, I guess, special approach to tell you? No special approach. What sometimes happens in college, we see a team that's full of us, and all of a sudden we play for that result. So good views there from both teams. Uh, Maruga team hoping to be on the rise this afternoon. As we look at the table, we see Maruga FC is at the bottom of the table after seven matches. This is their eighth. They have no points just yet. AC Port of Spain got their first win last weekend. They are up to seven on six points. Timonix Lockheed Rangers are on top of the league. Defence Force are second after that big win last evening. Police FC are third on 18 points. Canopia FC on 13. They drew with the leaders last evening as well. Deportivo PF are on 11 points at 5th, Real West Fort are 6th, AC Port of Spain are 7th, like we said before, Central are 8th, Central Soccer World are 9th. Let's take a look at the starting lineups this afternoon. For Maruga FC, they'll start with Kervel Turner in goal. Of course, the man you just heard from a short while ago, Nigel Thomas, the, the, Nigel John rather, their captain. He is wearing the number 6 this afternoon. The defence will be populated by... Rodney Young and Tashawn De Leon partnering each other in the center. Tyrone La Fortune and Yatam Henry will be their wing backs this afternoon. Marcus John and Ryan Davis will be the midfield players, while Atiba Charles is on the right. And of course, Nigel John out left. Jamali Barclay and Kervel Jeremiah will seek the goals from the forward position this afternoon for Maruga FC. Looking now at the op opposition team, AC Port of Spain. Jadel Poon Lewis returns in goal after a stellar showing last weekend. He was really the forge, the foundation of their comeback against Real West Fort United. At the back, you have Malik Myres, uh, Maurice Ford, Kareem Eastman, and Shaquille Edwards. Michel Poonandron will uh, anchor that midfield along, alongside Anthony Charles. Che Benny retains that a playmaker role just behind a front three of Sadil McLean, Saeed Charles, and Jaden Prowell. And points to note this evening, it marks the return for Maruga of their coach, uh, Dernal Maskell. She's back in the dugout, so to speak. So they'll be hoping to really impress their head coach this afternoon with their performance. Certainly, uh, Dernal Maskell, uh, of course, a player with vast experience at the international level herself and certainly uh, doing human service in Maruga at that developmental level now with this very young squad, it must be said. The officials on screen this afternoon, referee Jassy McDonald, assistant referee one, Roshan Baliram, assistant referee two, Anton Gill, and the fourth official, Nikolai Nyron. Oh. 
So a really uh, good game on paper for both teams this afternoon. Of course, AC Port of Spain was one of the teams without a win in this tournament just last week. Uh, Maruga will be looking to emulate them by getting their first win against them at the same venue. It's been really tough going for the boys from the deep south in this ascension tournament of trinidad and tobago um but again they've shown really great spirit and grit to, to come back week in week out and uh, attempt to give us something to continue to, to to uh to entertain ourselves here in this ascension tournament again it's going to, it's going to be a really good uh battle i i think especially in that midfield area where we, we'll see the likes of uh michelle punangeron and Che Benny, that mid midfield partnership for AC Port of Spain with national team experience as well, uh, continuing to pull the strings for them. Yeah, Poonan Jaron last week ran himself out of his uniform. He was very full of running, getting in the tackles, also helping out on the attacking end as well. Che Benny, of course, was the hero in that match. He scored a beautiful double. That second one, of course, would, he would want to put that in the highlight reel for future generations to see. So we know what to expect from both teams. As we see the referees centering the ball as the teams also go through their final preparations, final team talks in their huddles. Maruga playing in the fluorescent green and white. AC Port of Spain will play in their all blue kit, a very snazzy royal blue and pink strip. I think it's the second game in a row they've uh, managed to pull out some new kits and hopefully this time they'll have this is the same fortune that they had last week uh, of course they, they uh, donned a new kit for the first time <laughs> and uh, really were able to, to to get the result to match now looking at this uh, affair here this afternoon at the arima velodrome i think you know it's going to be really interesting to see how ac port of spain approaches this match in particular we heard earlier before the game their goalkeeper Jadel Poon Lewis aware of the fact that sometimes complacency seems to step, step in when you're playing against a team that's you know lower than you in the standings um, so far Maruga have proven to be you know um, an easy three points for, for all of the teams that they've uh, come up against hopefully AC Port of Spain will be able to uh, you know uh, guard against uh, that complacency with a, a, a stellar performance here this afternoon yeah and just to defend my home team I feel like They've been very good for very long in these games. They've just lost some concentration in the end. So hopefully with Maskell here, they can play the game that they know they can play. This is an early chance cleared from the Maruga area. A little bit of panic there in the, in the back line, of course, after the goalkeeper made the initial save. He was ready to pounce on it uh, to, to gather up the, the loose ball, but you know it was cleared before he could get there. And already uh, Port of Spain showing the, their attacking intent. They've made some changes in this one side. Charles, who we saw bombing down the left side from that left fullback position last weekend, is playing in the forward line this afternoon. And already he was uh, in, in really uh, good position just then. This is Che Benny now with the first attempt at goal, uh, forcing uh, Kovel Turner to cover all of his angles. In the end he did, and it was a wide and off target. Yeah, good sight there for Benny, of course. He will know what it is to, to bag goals on this ground. Uh, he'll be expecting a similar performance to the one in the Derby Day Port of Spain from last week. So Maruga FC on the back foot early, and hopefully they'll be looking to be, be able to, you know, get them the, their feet on the ball and, and compose themselves, move forward a little bit more efficiently uh, to perhaps pose some more meaningful threat to this. A comfortable AC Port of Spain team so far. This is Benny looking for Charles. Charles is all alone now out into the left side of the 18 yard area. His, first, his ball is blocked at the first post and they'll have the opening corner kick of this match. Che Benny was hustling over, but you know, he's been out maneuvered, outranked certainly by. Punanjaron, who is going over now to take care of the set piece. Pensive looking. Ruga substitutes bench so far. It's early days yet, just about two and a half minutes gone in this one. It's AC Port of Spain with this corner. Michel Punanjaron, an in swinger, headed away. It lands to Charles, and his shot is blocked. Coming in now is 
their captain Charles recycles possessions back out to Punanjaron now he has some chasing to do Charles comes in support a good no look pass there from Punanjaron finding Benny and he's looking to pick out that far stick that player making the approach there look to be and uh, actually they've so far already made a, a, a change to what we initially thought was their starting lineup that's Jaheim McPhee he's in and it doesn't seem as though McLean is on the pitch actually he is he's on the far side so changes Prowell. to Prowell actually looks to have missed out today in favor of Jaheim McPhee that's the man on screen now changes to lying up aside we already see the main protagonists for this AC Port of Spain team getting involved very early Poonan Jaron and that ball there from Che Benny just looking to pick out man on the far side Maruga will have to keep them under lock and key this evening if they are to get anything from this match Port of Spain has a really good looking defensive lineup. Of course, it's marshaled by the center back pair of Myers. Oh, and that's a tough challenge coming in. Diving into the tackle on that occasion looked to be Kareem Eastman. And that should really be a caution. He was over the top of the ball and Referee Jassy McDonald is exercising every bit of restraint and leniency not to caution the player even this early in the match. That was a really ugly tackle. Yeah, they spoke about not being complacent, but I think they were a bit too alert. This tackle just more misguided than anything. Looked to be going for the ball. It's wrong footed there by the pitch. captain Nigel Johnny gives it away this is Eastman and he is also dwelling a bit too long on it Maruga FC come forward now shot coming in from distance that's not going to trouble Poon Lewis from Ryan Davis Poon Lewis really um, a composed figure in goal last weekend his first appearance in this competition as we see McPhee going the other way but the offside flag of the assistant referee on the far side that's Anton Gill went up to curtail that poten potential goal threat. And it's going to be a goal, uh, free kick rather to Maruga FC. Yeah, Turner still putting a paw on that to keep it out. So Maruga will want to remain focused as we spoke about earlier. Focus is the key for them this afternoon. And really has been one of the failings of their campaign so far they've played football but here they come this could be dangerous and Myers failing to deal with it it gave uh, Ryan Davis a sniff and he eventually just clattered into Poon Lewis resulting in a free kick against Maruga FC Poon Lewis slow to get back up but as we look at what transpired there Mirez trying to hold off on for the approach of Poon Lewis and I don't see too much wrong with that it was a loose ball and uh, if anything Mirez was blocking or obstructing uh, Davis from getting uh, to the end of that one hey, you can't fault Davis for going in there there was an opportunity there was a sniff so Good intensity there from the Maruga forward. As it stands, it's a free kick for ACPOS. come forward again this is looking to 
pick out McLean on that far side. This pass back finds Charles, the captain, but it's snuffed out now by Maruga FC and they're looking to turn it around. This is Davis again giving chase this time. Poon Lewis was able to get out quickly and gather. It restarts this AC Port of Spain possession. This is headed out by Punanjur and coming in on the blind side is Charles. Well defended there by Atiba Charles for Maruga. It's going to be a throw into AC Port of Spain. So this game just settling into its trend so far. We see AC Port of Spain looking a little bit more meaningful in their possessions in this type of area of the pitch. But Maruga FC doing well to repel them so far and it looks as though they'll be playing a, a more of a counter-attacking uh, brand here this afternoon. They've been sitting pretty deeply, allowing Port of Spain to come onto them, cutting out those passes down the channels and looking to set their front men off to the races. Jamali Barclay and Kufel Jeremiah. Here comes now Ford, former W Connection man. It's with Che Benny. He'll whip this one in. This is of cross the face of goal, but Turner was able to scoop it up for Maruga FC and here they come again. Benny is going to be critical to anything positive for AC Port of Spain today as we saw last weekend. A double earning them a come from behind win against Real West Fort United. Here he is on the ball again, Benny. Ups to go back to Ford. Ford now to Charles, the man they call Simple. Simple pass out, finds Shaquille Edwards and cross is into the arms of Turner who's seen a lot of possession perhaps more than any one Maruga FC player so far the goalkeeper good hold up play here now does well to get the ball across the face of goal there but no Maruga FC uh, player arriving in support yeah, and to your earlier point about uh, the Maruga tactics this afternoon, I think when you've been leaking goals, as they have been so far this season, it makes sense to soak up some pressure as much as you can. Try to catch a team like AC Port of Spain on the break. They love to play with the ball on the ground, love to possess it. So it will be good to look for the mistakes and the gaps around them when they approach try to nip a goal in these early stages but here they come again good evasive maneuver there by Shai Charles he composes himself but the pass is over hit McLean will retrieve this is one back to Edwards and now Punanjaron is on the ball he goes inside Charles to Benny now the area he likes to pick up possession but just trying to perhaps find his favorite left foot that time and hurried out of it by the Maruga defense. This is a backward pass. Maruga FC. A bit of hesitation before it's eventually played forward and the player had straight offside. He didn't even bother to attempt to get onto it. That's Davis. And here come AC Port of Spain again. The captain, Anthony Charles. Nanjaron gets this one wide to Edwards. Ford now, you get it wider to Eastman. Eastman has Paris, Charles rather, Charles gets it now. This is a good ball over the top side, Charles gives chase, but he strayed offside. Yeah, and you can see earlier as well how AC Port of Spain will try to get around this deep lying Maruga team. Possess the ball in the midfield try to release one of their wingers they know it'll be tight for Benny and Poonanjaron in the middle so those outlets will be key to their approach Maruga FC meanwhile with a free kick one of their 
Meanwhile, off to the sideline, Punanjaran has to, he's left the field of play. And he's asking for some treatment. Seems to have gotten a scar there. Of course, the field is a bit more moist than it was last weekend, but still very dry, very coarse here at the Arima Velodrome. And it seems as though he just scraped his knee there, Punanjaran. Charles going offside again so he'll want to take stock of his timing and his running so far he's really uh, a very attacking player he always looks to get onto the front foot but definitely uh, he has to, to check his running this afternoon as we've seen him go offside at least three times already yeah, a little more patience will serve him well three offsides before the 15th is not a good report card so far for Mr. Charles. But again, it will be encouraging because you want to see your players getting forward. But I mean, at this stage, anything that doesn't come of an attack for AC Port of Spain will certainly be we uh, weighing on their minds and may even see some desperation uh, starting to, to creep in. throw into Maruga FC it's a deep one and a good header but Poon Lewis alert to the danger distributes it quickly this is Eastman Punanjaran back on the field of play as we see with him with a strapped knee there and this is a good ball a good run by McLean but Turner is also alert to the danger Once again, here come Maruga FC. So maybe AC Port of Spain might want to think about playing an extra pass or two around that attacking area. Maruga has stepped off and allowed them to try to tip those balls over the top and in behind. It's not worked to good effect, but this is a good ball here from Benny. Look, picking out Charles. He finds his feet and flashes another good ball across goal. Arriving late that time was McLean who retrieves it on the far side now. So Charles able that time to hold his runner to better effect. And a good cross, good low cross there. Right where you want to, to have it served in between that channel between the goalkeeper and uh, the goalward facing defenders. Charles may be streaming this game in a headset somehow. He's taken our advice really well. It's a great effect. AC Port of Spain just letting up what looked to be their best chance so far of the match to go ahead. This is Punanjan reclaiming possession. Finds Benny who's looking again to just play a cheeky little pass through to find the run of McPhee that time. It's cut out but Port of Spain have it back and Benny has it back again trying to free McPhee but it rebounds now to Charles and it's offside again so he's not having the best of it on this left hand side say Charles who we see on in your picture just disappearing from the picture there yeah, and that duel between the linesman and Charles is one to watch this afternoon for sure Meanwhile, Maruga FC, their front men, getting it mixed up that time. Davis. And that imposing figure of the number nine, Shane King. So 17 minutes played here at the Arima Velodrome. It's nil-nil between Maruga FC and AC Port of Spain, but certainly AC Port of Spain have had the better of it. But for a couple offside calls, and they could be hit against the run of play if Davis can pick out one of two Maruga FC players in and around the danger area there. Unable to do so, and then a foul committed 
Let's put a spin off the hook. Punandran takes it quickly, but they lose possession once more. This is another ball playing it in behind, looking for King. Good first touch, trying to spin his man, but that time running out of space. Good defending by Mirez, resulting in a goal kick for the Port of Spain team. Certainly a more composed Maruga team this afternoon than in previous incarnations. Little more thought in the way that they are approaching this match against the men from Port of Spain. A bit of a tactical adjustment being made by the AC Port of Spain head coach. He's brought McLean over to this near side and sent Charles to the far side, hoping to have better luck and certainly better results from the forward running of his two flankmen. Charles has it now. That's not a good touch. So, from the looks of it, no change in fortunes for side Charles. But early days yet. Still inside the opening 20 minutes of this one. Ford is asking for some better rotation and movement ahead of him. This is with Anthony Charles now to Shaquille Edwards. And he just gives that one away. Ruga come forward and that's a really naive pass cut out by the Port of Spain defense and this is McLean now he works hard to keep the possession finds its way to Benny who finds Punanjaron turns nicely and I think Charles is onside this time he'll have a gallop but again just not decisive enough allowing the Maruga FC defense to re to retreat and make a, a really goal saving block that time before it gets into the arms of Turner Yeah, good defending there just to keep out Charles, who had finally found some real estate, allowed to run into that Maruga area. There we see La Fortune. He's coming up from his left back position. Former Maruga composite standout. AC Port of Spain coming away now. This is Jaheim McPhee. We haven't seen too much of him, but for a few sparks early on. And this is now a ball played to Charles. Anthony Charles thought about going for it. He left it for Said, and then they just mix it up between themselves, allowing Maruga to be let off the hook once more. Here they come now. This is the captain, Nigel John. Plays it wider. And a good looking ball in, headed away by Mirez. And now Punanjaron looking to spring Benny, who'd also gone offside. Yeah, good eyes from the linesman there. Benny was well away. Thought he was on, but wasn't paying attention to the line, Ruga line. It's very hard to miss. Their bright fluorescent green strip. This is an ACPOS through. So, action here at the Arima Velodrome. Still goalless between AC Port of Spain, the team in seventh position, sixth position rather, and the bottom team, Maruga FC. But Port of Spain 
still laboring, trying to get themselves forward. That time, the ball to McPhee was just behind them, running out of play on this near side touchline. Ruga FC come far now. This is Davis. King had tried to hold his run. In the end, it didn't matter. The pass was overhit. And Poon Lewis comes out to take command. Pulls this one out now to Maurice Ford, who's looking ahead to Benny. Still, AC Port of Spain might be disappointed with their play so far. I think they've played within themselves a bit too much. They've not been too... Uh, adventurous they've tried to do the simple things and do it the simple way I, but i think that this game needs someone to sort of take charge the way benny did last week in the latter stages against real west fourth they've been probing yes but really uh hesitating to try to be a little bit more adventurous as they are this time and once again they're thwarted by the offside flag although mcphee comes in to stab that one in beneath the advancing turner i am not sure that dale mclean had gone offside but assistant referee anton gill certainly had a better view and a better position to, to make that call for offside we have another look this is benny mcphee looked to be if anyone the player coming in from that offside position yeah, the linesman is really uh, showing that time, but of course his decision is final. As you can see the protestations there from the goal scorer, who looked to be on side from here. Certainly did, Jovan. But as you know, referee's decision fill in the blank. Port of Spain coming forward again. This is Benny trying to link with Punanjaran. It gets a favorable deflection, inviting McPhee to give chase, but he can't get on to the end of it and it's cleared away by the Maruga defense. Port of Spain with it again. This is Edwards going back now to Mirez. A little exchange there between Anthony Charles and Punanjaran and the former freeze side Charles and a good ball across looking for Benny. He's usually a little bit more composed and certainly more deadly from that sort of position than he was on that occasion. Yeah, the last time out he scored a pretty difficult goal from range but this one looked to be a simple enough goal for Benny. Right up until the final minute, just putting it into orbit, much to the relief of the Maruga defense. And we see if I'm to his to his defense, uh, it seemed to bubble just as he was about to take the, sh the shot. And we know that we've made the, the point before that this surface is not the easiest to, to maneuver. At that time, Benny might have taken his eye off the ball just as it got a jump there off of something on the surface they come up they come up again McLean trying to free McPhee goes the other way and they retrieve it again now deep inside their own half Port of Spain this is Eastman looking for McLean to take his man on he gets around him but a good last ditch tackle there before again they give up possession Punanjaran now turns this is McLean he's onside he's going down a bit too easily that's not going to fool Jassy McDonald and now all he has to show for it is a bloodied arm McLean again we made the point before again that this is a very coarse surface Punanjaran got a scrape to his knee earlier after a fall and this time clean. Yeah, just encouragement for the players, I think, to stay on their feet. Of course, no other encouragement needed than the very resolute Jassy McDonald with the whistle. 
He's not easily fooled. This is a ball out to McLean again. Actually, this is Eastman. A long way forward. Trying to get the favor of McDonald that time for a free kick and instead. It's only going to be a throw in. He himself will take. Kareem Eastman lobs it into the body of McPhee. This is a good ball to Punajero and Anthony Charles now. And the flag on this near side of assistant referee Roshan Baliram went up for foul throw. So it's been a while since I've seen one of those. And every time I see it, my reaction remains the same. Yeah, the type of thing you would expect in a FET match, not at this level. But the referees do have to call it. It irks me actually every time I see a, a foul throw at, at this level of the game. I mean, it's one of the fundamentals. Things do go wrong, mind you. I, I accept and recognize that. And he, the flag, Bali Ram's flag is up again for another foul throw. So two in quick succession. Yeah, Both the, committed by AC Port of Spain. Yeah, the back foot, as you saw in that close-up, just lifting before the ball was released. That is, of course, not allowed, boys and girls at home. Just for future reference. We saw that time, fourth official Nikolai Nyron asking McLean to step off of the field of play to receive treatment. Of course, you know, once a player is bleeding, he must receive treatment and that bleeding must be stopped before he's allowed to return. That occasion, showing them how to do it, the Maruga FC. Atiba Charles. While His throw in leads to a free kick now for Maruga. It's their first in this sort of position. They'll need to have the quality to deliver it into the area to th and threaten this Port of Spain team. Good looking free kick there, just snapped up by Poon Lewis. There is a ACPOS player on the floor, clutching his face. That is Malik Mirez. Just collecting himself before it's again getting to his feet. No need for the stretcher on this occasion. That uh, direct impact team has been doing human service throughout this tournament. Referee will drop this for the ACPOS custodian. with Benny. So to Eastman. Back to Benny. This is a great ball and he'll break into the open field. And that's a great coming from the goalkeeper there, Kovel Turner. Benny is back on his feet. He receives it from Sai Charles and again he's stopped that time I think he tried to go around Turner and maybe he should have taken an earlier shot having seen the Maruga FC goalkeeper advance as far as he, he did Benny wanting to make sure of it in the end comes away with nothing to show Maruga 
Aruga FC free kick just inside opposition territory. It's floated up and met by a strong header from Mirez. Yellow card shown there to the Maruga FC defender. For a meaty tackle on Benny, who's still riding in agony on the floor. He is a tough customer, so if Che Benny is on the pitch, you know something did shake him up a little powers through to get on his feet and share his thoughts with the tackler. So half an hour already played in this one. Still goalless. But here come AC Port of Spain with a ball speared in toward Cy Charles. Benny tried to flick it around the corner. Unsuccessfully. See Port of Spain now regain. This is Anthony Charles to Edwards. Cut out there the clever turn from Sai Charles. Punanjara now getting fouled and unable to bring that one under control. Cleared away for another AC Port of Spain throw in on the far side. Just cleared there by Tyrone La Fortune. It's back with Poon Angeron. to Sai Charles beating one beating two and looking for the goal but it's a good save from Kerval Turner really good save to get down there it's Benny Punanjaran Ruga does well to keep them at bay on that occasion and looking for the outlet to no avail So Maruga, I think, will be the happy of the two teams so far with 36 minutes gone. Under 10 minutes left in this first period here at the Arima Velodrome. They yet to concede against AC Port of Spain for all the quality in that midfield and up top. And here they come. Jahi McPhee and a crunching tackle by the man coming across there, Tishon De Leon. He's certainly feeling the hurt from it. And McPhee is back, back on his feet. Yeah, but but that's the sort of challenge you want to see in that position, Jovan. Yeah, clean, fair, hard. Uncompromising. Surely. Kept his eye on the ball. Great tackle there. Perfect. I think this angle might offer better insights. Yes. Get in there, young man. The Leon coming across to keep the scores level. Nil-nil. But he's hurt himself. And they are already forced now into a substitution. It seems. The Leon will play no further part. Fourth official Nikolai Nyron will confirm that short order. We 
can tell you that the player readying himself or the player that has been readied is Jeremiah Forrester. And yes, as you see, the board goes up. Tishon De Leon is out and in is Jeremiah Forrester. So his last action, a crunching tackle that by De Leon. Puts his body on the line for this Maruga team to keep them in the hunt. Some points from this match. His sacrifice will be noted. And if anything, it's a great example of the tone the rest of the defenders should be taking. However, before they can even adjust and sort things out at the back following that forced substitution, AC Port, Port of Spain has taken a lead here at the Arima Velodrome and it's that man in the 39th minute. Michel Punandron. Yeah, Punandron just benefiting from a lack of concentration here to ghost in and flick that into the far post. I tell you what, it was a great delivery from Shaquille Edwards. Wide on the right, as we see Punanjaron, he was always moving around as that, that ball was being prepared. And a wonderful flicked header beats Turner into the far corner. Certainly a well-made goal there to put AC Port of Spain into the lead. And undo the hard work so far from this Maruga team. They will be chomping at the bit to press home this advantage as the first half enters the 40th minute. Spoonanjaron splashing a pass, hoping to release that man on the far side. Looks to be Charles. This is Edwards and Punanjaron linking again. Further away from goal this time, but patient build up here from AC Port of Spain. Edwards gets it back, plays it into Ford, and now to Benny looking over his shoulder, trying to play that quick release for McLean, but it's cut out. McLean gets it now. He'll have a run at his man. That's Forrester, the substitute. Plays Benny in behind. Good ball across and good defending there to just chest it out of play. Rodney Young on spot. AC Port of Spain beginning to go through the gears now. They sense that perhaps before the expiration of the first half, they can add to this one goal lead. Yeah, a bit of blood in the water there for these Port of Spain players. Certainly, Benny's delivery here be treasured to the far post, but no one able to get it in the box. They recover possession though. To AC Port of Spain. Shot is from outside. It's easily taken by Turner. Kareem Eastman to Anthony Charles ahead of him. on a run there just to the bottom of the screen was McLean he tried to feed him in Charles the other Charles gets it now side Charles that's a heavy first touch and brave goalkeeping from Kerval Turner off of his line to snuff out what looked to be a promising AC Port of Spain attack Anjaron now moves in field, thinks about the shot, decides against it. This is Anthony Charles now picking out Edwards. We know he can cross a ball. He lines it up now. This is McLean gets it, nodding it down. Unable to pick out a player inside the penalty area, but Benny retrieves. He's also looking to clip one over the top. 
AC Port of Spain now really sensing that they can get one more. Said Charles with a goal. And it's blocked. Cleared by Maruga, but only partially. It's Punanjaran again on the ball. Move it all the way back now to Ford, who senses that there's no real need to stretch themselves. Instead, he plays it back, attempting to draw the Maruga FC players forward to find it a bit more space. And they go again now. This is Edwards. On the outside of him is McPhee. McPhee gets onto it. He has support. He's going alone. But for a timely poke there, toe poke away from the danger man McPhee. Edwards picks it up. Maruga FC has to do some more defending here with just about a minute and a half and a half rather on the clock in this first half but McLean now gets away from his man that's Forrester was charging in and also charging in is Turner doing very well indeed to block out that McLean attempt yeah Turner's been really awake this afternoon getting off his line to prevent any sniff at goal Here's McLean. Poon Lewis that was stopped. Poon Angeron, my apologies. Player whose parent made sure that his son's name was properly pronounced on this broadcast. This will be Yatam Henry, the free kick, just outside of the Maruga area. Goes straight to an ACPOS player, Punanjaran now. Options left and right. Chooses to go backward. Covers it again. It's with Kareem Eastman. He's advanced up the pitch. This ball is into Benny. Good, good first touch. Well stopped there by La Fortune. Back middle here with Nigel Johns looking for that man, Atiba Charles on the right side. Just overcooked it a bit. As we see one minute of time added on to this first half. Very balanced first half. But for that Poonanger on goal in the 39th minute. ACPOS will take their time bringing this one up the pitch. After what has been a pretty good showing for them, they started off slower, but as they have in previous matches, were able to increase the tempo and get the breakthrough through the deep lying midfielder. As referee Jesse McDonald brings the first half to a close at the Arima Velodrome. Both teams can be pleased with the first half that they've had despite Maruga being down. They will be encouraged by the way that they've approached this match. ACPOS, of course, are up 1 0. That's always reason to smile. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with first half highlights from this Ascension match at the Arima Velodrome. is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches, right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. 
If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country? <laughs> I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I want to look Roach Lavinson come here for the carnival if, if you'll interview me. But how could you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what will you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. What is television? It seems like a simple question, but television means different things to different people. We in the Caribbean are very unique people. That's why we need unique television. Welcome to m &E TV, where we showcase our lives in the Caribbean. m &E TV is about us, the special way we talk, the way we walk, dance, move. m &E TV is about me. It's about you. m &E TV is about our amazing Caribbean experience. Stand near you. It's the Guardian Lucky Number Draw. Your daily chance to win $1,000 instantly when you purchase the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian. It's quick and easy for your chance to win. A unique number will be printed at the back of each Guardian newspaper daily. Purchase your Guardian newspaper, then join JW for the daily Guardian Lucky Number Draw. The winning number on just before the nightly news on CNC3. If the number drawn matches the unique number at the back of your Guardian newspaper, then $1,000 dollars is yours just bring the winning guardian newspaper and a picture id to guardian media limited you have until 3 p.m the following work day to claim your prize it's the guardian lucky number draw your daily chance to win nlcb approved Feeling isolated? Don't worry, we will bring the world to you. The nation's first and leading newspaper, the Trinidad and Tobago Guardian is extending a special home delivery for 30 days for just $99. Yes, yeah, yeah. for just $99, you can get the TNT Guardian newspaper, the fastest growing and most read newspaper, most credible and highest reader value and voted tops for best publication by more readers than any other newspaper delivered to your home. It's easy to subscribe to our home delivery. Simply call us now at 225 Four four six five extension four two seven four and speak to one of our customer service representatives and we, and we will bring the world to you. We are the fourth estate. We educate, we inform, and we hold those in authority, politicians, business leaders, and others to account. Connecting the public to the truth drives our purpose here at CNC3. When we stand behind a desk every single night, a lot of people don't know that we're a huge part of the news process. We eat, breathe, and sleep news. And that reflects in everything that we do as a news team. Every day we tell the stories of people's journey through life. Stories of their success, stories of their sadness, stories of their grief, stories of their glory. We're the mirror in which society looks at itself. When a storm is coming, everyone always thinks worst case scenario, and sometimes it may just be a brief shower or two. It's not always going to be a Green Bay level event. So it's important to have the most credible and accurate information coming from a verified source. Welcome, you're watching the 7 o'clock news on CNC3. 
Bowling Ball filmmakers, producers, content creators, influencers, and recording artists. If you're looking to rent a versatile studio space with green screen, video wall, cyclorama, and more, look no further. GM Labs is here to make your dreams a reality. Located in the heart of Port of Spain on St. Vincent Street, GM Labs is your one-stop shop for all your creative needs with over 2,800 square feet to work with. Take your creative concept to the final product at GM Labs. Give us a call or WhatsApp or message us on our Instagram and Facebook pages at GM Labs TT. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Help us tell your stories. We all see the negatives happening here in Trinidad and Tobago. Let us begin the conversation with inspiring content. Targeting change. Inspire, Inspire TT. TT. Be, Be the, the change. change. The Digital Guardian launches this all new upgraded Digital Guardian app. This all new upgraded Digital Guardian app gives you live news on the go. Now get real time news faster with notifications free of charge to keep you informed on breaking stories. Customize your news feed with only articles you are interested in for easier, comfortable reading and with same convenient access to the digital paper. Be visit the iOS App Store and Google Play Store to download or update the Digital Guardian app for the most credible news in TNT. Already have an account? Simply tap on the resource subscription button in settings to sign in. It's a free update. Make sure you have yourself a great invest week by viewing The Bourse Report every Monday morning at 6.15 a.m. during CNC3's The Morning Brew. You'll get sound financial advice whether you're a new or experienced investor when you view The Bourse Report. CNC3, covering your world. Get the nation's leading newspaper on the go by downloading the Digital Guardian app on your iOS or Android devices now and enjoy our special introductory subscription offer now on. The nation's first and best digital paper in an easy-to-read digital format. The Digital Guardian, Trinidad and Tobago's fastest growing, most subscribed and most read digital paper. Stay on top with the market leader and don't miss a beat in today's fast-paced world. Go to Apple Store or Google Play and download now. There's a taste in the air everywhere Feel the vibe cause it's something to share Smooth, rich and creamy, you'll find it right here Makes you smile, relax a while, it's fun and good chair This is Uncle Pete's. we have here is that these characters and I refer to them as pests right what they are doing is destroying our country but not on my watch no street no turf no block shall belong to these cockroaches right it's no longer business as usual happy hour is over if they don't fear God at least they will fear Terminix have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country <laughs> I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Ladenstone come here for it. Match week 8th of this Ascension tournament. We're here at the Arima Velodrome. The score so far is 1-0 to AC Port of Spain against Maruga FC. Let's see how that first half unfolded. Maruga with some early pressure, feeling the pressure there with that tackle. You see Poon Lewis just letting it go. This was a AC Port of Spain. The first rally from Saeed Charles went wide, did that pass. This was the offside call. 
looked to be the first goal from Jaheim McPhee. There you see his frustration with the linesman. The assistant referee there. This one looked to be easier to score than to throw away for Che Benny, but going well over the bar. Benny again having another opportunity. This time, great coming there from Kovel Turner to keep him out. Benny feeling the pain on that occasion. Ball in from Poon Anjaron. And a yellow card for that man, Rodney Young. This is a good attempt here for ACPOS. Weaving through with Sai Charles. It's a good save from Taylor. Then a wonderful tackle would be the last action for that man, the number three, Tishon De Leon. Another good approach play. And this was the moment Shaquille Edwards with a good delivery in for Poon Anjaron. Flicked into the far post to finally get past Maruga after 39 minutes. And that's how we stand 1-0 after 45 minutes. ACPOS are up in this match but Maruga aren't to be counted out they have shown signs of good football so far in this match we'll return to see how this one unfolds from the Arima Velodrome so far it's 1-0 to AC Port of Spain join us for the second half after this break is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches, right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across your country? I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Laden's son come here for the carnival, if, if you'll interview me. But how can you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what would you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at Terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Welcome back to the Arima Velodrome. It's the Ascension Tournament of Trinidad and Tobago, match week number eight. And of course, it's the second game day following an exhilarating doubleheader at the Phase 2 La Hockita ground. Last night, we are here at the Arima Velodrome for another doubleheader. This is game one between AC Port of Spain and Maruga FC. Port of Spain leading one goal to nil with a goal scored in the first half, the 39th minute, to be exact by Michel Punangeron, giving AC Port of Spain the lead in this one. And of course, Maruga FC trying, or will try in the next 45 minutes to claw their way back into it. Because they're looking for their first point in this competition. AC Port of Spain, meanwhile, following victory last weekend, are looking for another win to continue to move up the standings. Jassi Marie Kerr, joined as ever by Jovan Rovello. Yeah, Jassi, is really good to be back at a cool Arima Velodrome. We've had a typical dry season weather for most of this tournament. I'm sure the players will really treasure those rains that fell on this pitch earlier. Maruga FC looking to freshen things up. They've made a substitution to start this second half 
The player going out, Yatham Henry, coming in. Is Rivers. Man called Makanaki. Hopefully he can have an as eclectic an effect on this game as his name. AC Port of Spain bust the first period, but didn't necessarily play themselves above and beyond this team. They weren't very uh, imaginative. As we see Che Benny trying to conjure something as he did last week. He scored from that similar position and range. This time going low onto the goalkeeper's left. Last week he went high onto the goalkeeper's right for the winning goal in the Derby de Port of Spain against the Real West Fort United. Yeah, Benny just showing what's his favorite side of this pitch very early on to earn the first corner of the second half. Comes to nothing for AC Port of Spain. Maruga will take this goal kick. Well aware that the can still get back into this match. All to play for in the second half, of course. You wouldn't think it by the casual stride back in onto the field of play there of goalkeeper Kervel Turner. He made some really crucial interventions in that first period, which kept this scoreline as low as it currently is. Only beaten by a wonderful glancing header from Michel Punanjuron. Yeah, certainly not casual Turner in that first half. He was off his line to good effect. More than once too. Shaquille Edwards, the man with the assist to Punanjuron in the first half. Taking charge of that throw in. And here's Punanjara now slipping in Jahim McPhee. Instead, here comes Maruga, the substitute now. Makanaki Rivers getting it into Ryan Davis, who was fouled. Play resumed quickly. This is the captain, Nigel John. Kervel Jeremiah plays a fantastic ball looking for Rivers. Rivers will collect it now. He has three inside, waiting a delivery. Instead, he just trips over himself. And as you can see from his obvious disappointment, Ruga FC letting an opportunity slip. There he is, Rivers. Certainly it seems as though he's mindful that he's been introduced to have an impact. But instead a man looking to make an impact and making an immediate impact is Sai Charles. He'd gone offside on more than a few occasions in the first period. This time time is run much better. Getting past his defender and beating Turner at his near post to make it 2-0 AC Port of Spain in the 49th minute. Yeah, Charles looked to have glided straight toward gold on that occasion. The coverage just not enough to keep him under lock and key. As we see again, a beautiful ball through midfield. Just isolating his defender. Just tucking it in to Turner's right. Giving to Turner's the left. The eyes as though shaping to to play that one towards the far post and instead just whipping, whipping it inside the far, the, the near stick instead. And that's how AC Port of Spain assumes a 2-0 lead. Yeah, Forrester, the first half substitute there, unable to catch up to the goal scorer. He'll want to do much better 
as this half progresses. It's Charles, Saeed Charles, that is, to McPhee. Gets it back, Charles. He could be in for a double, just like that. Instead, Forrester does a much better job this time of ushering that one out of play, getting his body be between man and ball. Sai Charles, certainly his eyes would have lit up at that opportunity, unable to pull the trigger in time before Forrester's intervention. Much better from Charles in this, these early moments of the second half. All that potential shown in the first half finally paying off. Edwards goes back now to Perez. Runs to Punanjaron. They're queuing up across goal. McPhee, McLean. And that really is careless defending. Offering a free shot there to McPhee. He'd given up on the run, actually, as Punanjaran flashed it across and would have been delighted to see it just gifted back to him by Tyrone LaFortune. Unable to beat Turner a third time in this one, though. A good point-blank save from the Ruga FC shortstopper. Kirvel Jeremiah get, comes away with it for Muruga to the outside he has Atiba Charles ups instead to go to the substitute Rivers that's really target defending there by Shaquille Edwards to get it away and this is McLean now giving chase unable to make progress in a forward motion he goes back instead and now is it's with, with McPhee McPhee they are asking for the offside for uh, Benny he's not offside he goes around the goalkeeper expertly and just like that the first the second half is coming to life two goals already in it the latest scored by Che Benny as the Maruga FC defense stood still begging for the offside flag to be raised by assistant Rosham Baliram. He had a better view of it than they did. And his correct decision allowed Benny to sidestep the goalkeeper. One more look here. McPhee turning and finding Benny all alone in all kinds of space. And that is delicious. Yeah, classic case of play to the whistle. Their former Ruger. Now they're three goals adrift. against uh, AC Port of Spain side that has upped the ante this afternoon in the second half. So they, have, they would have seen all that they needed to see of this Maruga team in the first half. And that has given them the intel to go at them in the second period. Already they find themselves two goals to the good, making it 3-0 overall. Goal scored by Michel Punanjaron in the first half, the 39th minute. Sai Charles in the 49th, and then Benny could be in for a double. Good defending there. And Benny again having a goal. So certainly they are looking to tighten the screws AC Port of Spain in this second half and add to their 3-0 advantage yeah Maruga seemed to be missing the energy of Tishon de Leon who had to exit in that first half AC Port of Spain just lining up now that man in your picture Che Benny looking for his fourth in two matches he was the hero here last weekend already tallied this afternoon so this Maruga team coached by 
former Trinidad and Tobago Women's International Daniel Mascal with all of a sudden with the majority of this second period to go be thinking about containing AC Port of Spain they would have done a really good job of it in the first period only going in trailing 1-0 at the half but now they trail 3-0 and as a team that has already been on the receiving end of a number of goals they'd want to certainly limit AC Port of Spain scoring this afternoon but they'll have to contend with a free kick here won by Anthony Charles Simple the AC Port of Spain captain just bundled over the edge of the Maruga FC uh, penalty area by that man the substitute Makanaki Rivers retreating there and that time trying to help out on defense. Yeah, that's one way to stop them, but referee Jesse McDonald won't allow it for too long throughout this match. They'll have to make sure they end this game with their full complement of players as well. Already forced into a substitution through the first half injury suffered by Tishon De Leon they've introduced Rivers meanwhile this is Benny lining up the free kick and what a save there by Kervel Turner the fact that he got two hands that suggests that it may have been easier than it looked but certainly that one was going in and Benny forced a really good save there out of Turner like it or not yeah Turner spotting the cameras there putting on a show he's been one of the better Maruga players this afternoon despite the scoreline Said Charles now he's tumbling he goes down and I think he was already on the way down he just lost his own balance there AC Port of Spain with a 3-0 lead over Maruga FC. Here they come again, the Port of Spain team through McLean. His run is cut out. And then possession returned to Maruga. They come forward now with Rivers. Keeps it in. Plays a good ball forward, trying to get it into the feet of Kervel Jeremiah. Skillful big man, but he wasn't going to beat Benny that time. And then, as mentioned in the first half, Saeed Charles, he likes to play on the front foot that time. He was looking for the ball in front of him, but it was placed behind him by Punanjaran. As we see two AC Port of Spain substitutions being made. Coming in is Jabari Raphael. Out is McPhee. And also introduced is Isaiah McLean for Sai Charles. So like for like substitutions there by AC Paul Spain. Putting on two attackers at this point suggests that you think they can get more out of this match. We are approaching the hour mark. Half hour for these two forwards to enjoy themselves in a match that looks a little out of reach for this Maruga team. Ball just string back to the Maruga defense. Some patient possession here from Maruga. That ball just going for a throw. 
little two lats there, the defender. ACPOS will get us restarted. Good defense there from La Fortune. Giveaway, pouncing onto it is the man, the sub substitute, Raphael, before Forrester gets it back to his goalkeeper who just punts it out for an AC Port of Spain throw in. Raphael gets it back to Shaquille Edwards. Edwards now to Charles, Anthony Charles. Now it's with Mirez. He's looking across the field, or rather up the field to no one in particular. So we pass the hour mark in this one. AC Port of Spain three. Could be four. Ooh, and that is a high boot. Another as a su substitute, and that's a red card. He was just introduced. Isaiah McLean. A bit too eager on that occasion to get onto the loose ball played forward and in the end I think that's the right decision by referee Jassy McDonald. Dangerously high was the challenge there of McLean. Yeah, he can protest all he wants. This boot is way too high and looks to have connected glancingly with Turner's face. Straight red. The right decision from the referee, Jesse McDonald. Of course, he would have shown two red cards in last weekend's fixture between Police FC and Central FC at the Central Soccer World, rather, at the St. James Barracks. Referee McDonald justified on both those occasions as well. This time, once again making the correct decision in ejecting Isaiah McLean. He'd only been on the pitch for a matter of minutes, introduced as a substitute replacement for Saeed Charles. Yeah, just about two or three minutes, Isaiah McLean making a quick cameo in and out. And now the Maruga FC technical staff will have some decisions to make on whether Turner is fit enough to carry on. I don't think I see a second goalkeeper among their substitutes having a look at the substitutes bench. So he'll have to be given really rigorous treatment and it, they'll have to make absolutely certain that he can't carry on before they make any decision on how he'll be replaced, Jovan. Yeah, and despite the conceding three, I think Kovel Turner would want to finish this match for his team. Shown great commitment and surely bravery on that occasion to approach Isaiah McLean with a 50-50 ball just bouncing into the box. So it's a relief to see him back on his feet after suffering a really dangerous blow to the side of his face. And now plays restarted. Ruga FC trying to make something out of this one. They are man up after that red card shown to AC Port of Spain's Isaiah McLean. And there we see another Blow to the face, a flailing arm there of Kivel Jeremiah. Referee McDonald is on spot to offer Malik Mirez some sort of assistance. The defender trying to get ahead of equally imposing Jeremiah that time and the raised elbow of Jeremiah. into the face of that man Mirez. Here's Turner. 
called upon to make a save and responding dutifully. Here now comes Maruga. That's Davis playing it into Jeremiah. Jeremiah gets it back now to his captain, Nigel John. He's looking to spread the play to Rivers, substitute. And it goes all the way back now to La Fortune. And they play it along the back line, bringing it back towards this near side. That's Forrester playing it over the top, asking Davis to go and chase it. He does. And then the just ducking under him as he leapt to meet that one was Shaquille Edwards. It's what you call a high fall. Certainly never pleasant. As your momentum is going in one direction. You almost are entirely robbed of body control there as we saw on that occasion Davis unable to break his fall and landing of this hard surface from that sort of height would be excruciating to even the most limber of us so Davis made the leap and Edwards didn't Instead, going under the player, taking away his legs and condemning him to a really uncomfortable fall. So, free kick to Maruga FC. In charge of free kick duties, the captain, Nigel John. He'll swing this one in. Low and just trying to drill it in at the first post. Instead, though, it comes all the way to another of the substitutes for port of spain he gets it over to benny now benny has mclean in support and he just tucks it around turner to make it four nil in the 68th minute to ac port of spain so that is a counter attack if there ever was one and you see there mclean giving all of the plaudits to jabari rafael on that occasion who made the run and was unselfish in playing it across to Benny, who was equally unselfish to slip McLean, Sadale McLean, in there on that occasion. Yeah, nice team goal here for ACPOS. We see Benny just rolling it to McLean and McLean rolling it under Turner to make it 4 0 to ACPOS. Very classy finish there. And he's labored labored on that left side he of course started off on the right side in the first half and then made the switch over to the left which allowed Saeed Charles who's now been substituted to get his goal but McLean certainly deserving of one as well and he got it on that occasion to make it 4-0 to AC Port of Spain a man down and here he is hunting again McLean that occasion just unfortunate to miss out. And here come Maruga. Handball there that time by Davis. He's saying it hit him in his stomach. Referee McDonald not so sure of the argument being offered by the attacking Maruga FC player there. Atiba Charles rather. Meanwhile, here come AC Port of Spain again. One wouldn't think that they are a man down. They're attacking as though they are a man up. And this time it's Punanjaran to Benny. Looking over his shoulder, asking his, his defender to come at me if you will. And the, that time the Spanner, or more internationally known as the Rabona, unsuccessful. Maruga bring it away. This is John trying to pick out Charles. Well defended. This is Shaquille Edwards now. He has Anthony Charles in support. And he asked for the return. Edwards knees to chest that time, unable to keep it in and a wry smile for that effort. He knew he had gone into fourth gear. Perhaps he forgot to let down the handbrake. <laughs> 
Yeah, just a big gap opening up on this right side of the Maruga defense. It's quite unusual. They do have the extra man. So they shouldn't be allowing such yardage to the ACPOS attack. Patient stuff at the back here by Maruga. Will they get themselves in trouble? Seventy-one minutes gone here at the Arima Velodrome in match number one of this afternoon's double header. AC Port of Spain leading four goals to nil and looking for more. Here's Sedale McLean, the scorer of their last goal. with Karim Eastman now crosses it in offside is Rafael that time and Turner is not called upon to make a save Anthony Charles, simple to Benny, he gets it back now, Charles. Runs away just a bit. Now here's Eastman. Ford. He's been tidy. Not called upon to do much defending, but his distribution is really what he's been known for. That time trying to start McLean on that far side. But instead, We'll have some defending to do now. It's with Atiba Charles. Gets inside of his man. He'll line up the shot and rolls it in cheekily through the legs of Mirez and past Poon Lewis, who was uh, unsighted a bit. Maruga FC, ladies and gentlemen, they pull the goal back here at the Aruma Velodrome. It's AC Port of Spain 4, Maruga FC 1. Showing signs of life, this Maruga FC team. to pull one back in the 73rd minute it's good work against two and three defenders rolling it through the legs into the far corner it's a great goal by Atiba Charles a deserving one too he's been one of their better players this afternoon certainly never given up always tried to make something happen once it's come to him and on that occasion, he made it happen indeed. Just slithering his way between the retreating Jabari Raphael and Shaquille Edwards. And then slotting a nice finish past Poon Lewis. He could be in again. And yeah, he is. Squares it back to his captain. And a wonderful save this time by Poon Lewis. Jadel Poon Lewis had to go full stretch to his left to deny a second goal here for Maruga FC. So they're coming to life. That time Atiba Charles showing some generosity. He was through on goal, cut back inside of Edwards and instead went to his captain whose side for that effort looked on its way in before Poon Lewis sprung across to make us to get a strong left hand to it. And just like that, Maruga there, a much more confident looking side, stroking the ball around nicely, looking for their openings. This is one played up towards Jeremiah. He's been their target man of sorts. He'd be disappointed in his ability to hold up play particularly, and on that occasion, let off again by a poor touch as going the other way Che Benny had gone offside spotted by assistant Lali Rao what a difference one goal makes Maruga finding the legs now to get at AC Port of Spain the 
Remember, there are man down. He's support of Spain, and this time, looking for more. Jeremiah unable to get a telling touch, and it's with Poon Lewis now. He's sending his team forward. He doesn't want. So it seemed he didn't want them to be playing too much around their own goal mouth. Come and collected that time to get it to Mirez. Flows this one up towards Benny. Good first touch. He has two ahead of him. He tries to slip Rafael in. But now it's with Punanjara on a driving run by the tiny mite. He has Rafael now. This should be five. He squares it to McLean. And Sedan McLean has a double. AC Porto Spain has a fifth. So again, really giving, sharing is caring, as they say, Jovan. And on that occasion, Rafael, I thought he would have gone for the shot. I certainly would have been, had I been in, in such a glorious position. But instead, he squares it to McLean, just as he did, he did previously. And the man they, they call Skemp shows his gratitude. Yeah, a testament to the spirit of this team that we see centre forward put on to do just that sharing like you said with McLean make it 5-1 meanwhile the substitute introduced for Maruga Keon Larod the player coming off Jamali Barkley So here they come again. McLean, he's in for a hat trick. He goes down. Referee McDonald has a good view, and so too does assistant Bali Ram on this fast on this near side. Nothing doing for McLean. Ruga FC will have a free kick now. Interested party is Jeremiah Forrester. He's clipping this one in towards the back post onto the head of LaRoad, I believe, who was just introduced, and his header poses no real threat to Poon Lewis. Here comes McLean, he's on a hat-trick. Fan and pushes past his man, asking Turner to come and get it. Turner has been an admirable performer in goal for Maruga FC. As we see, AC Port of Spain readying a trio of substitutions. One of them sees the entry of Shondell Augustus to replace Edwards, Shaquille Edwards. Also coming in, Sion Thomas for Che Benny. And already, Augustus trying to get in on the act. Spreads this one out wide to Rafael. But the cross is headed away for an AC Port of Spain. Corner kick. It's taken short. Rafael to Augustus. And looking to slip him in with the reverse pass there was 
Kunandran. Yeah, good afternoon for Che Benny. Turned into a great evening for AC Port of Spain. As a another substitute looks to come on. Out is Eastman. Kareem Eastman and introduced is Alec Benny. Tiba Charles touch just letting him down there. It's AC Port of Spain. Look to come the other way. This is Jabari Raphael. Another substitute. That time for Maruga. Forrester just recycling possession. Will be a Maruga through. Play on the pitch seems to require some treatment for a injury to his side. Can't quite tell which player this is. So it's the man, Mirez, back on his feet now, but he has to leave the field. As long as you receive treatment on the field of play, you must head to the sideline before the referee reintroduces you. So just a matter of minutes, approximately seven Seven of them left in the first match of a doubleheader here at the Arima Velodrome this evening. It sees AC Port of Spain with a five goal to one lead over Maruga FC and that time the Marugans trying to come forward through substitute Rivers. His run was stopped. they come again it's with Rodney Young asking for a touch now is Ryan Davis plays a good ball out to La Fortune La Fortune plays it up again to that big target man and that's two good touches but it's here with their goal scorer can't get off a shot Atiba Charles that time and AC Port of Spain able to bring it away. This is Punanjaron. Augustus playing it out wide and looping towards Rafael. Asking Marcus John to do some de defending on that occasion. So ACPOS look to be well on their way this evening. Looked a bit sketchy at times, but they sorted themselves out, especially at the start of the second half, to pull away from Maruga. This is Mirez. Aiming at McLean. He gets onto the end of it, but can't direct it on goal. 
And so can complete the hat trick. His double here this evening has formed a part of this 5 1 lead currently enjoyed by AC Port of Spain. He'll surely be targeting that third. There, just straying offside, Kuvel Jeremiah. Shown some good touches for a man of his stature. Head coach, Donald Maskell will be noting the performance he's had. Here's McLean trying to drive at goal. Dispossessed. Ruga trying to bring it the other way now. Larode forcing Sion Thomas to clear his lines. Two substitutes on either side. So if anything, it's been a an efficient performance from AC Port of Spain. Not at all a dominating one, despite the scoreline. Yeah, they have been made to work for these three points. By Maruga, credit to them. Keeping their heads in the game, even getting on the score sheet late in this match. He's been in the wars, that big front man, Kirvel Jeremiah, that time as they sought to hustle him out of possession. The combination of Anthony Charles and Malik Mirez committed the foul. And this here is Maruga again, but for a poor touch by the captain, Nigel John. That could have been their second of the night. It allows AC Port of Spain to come forward now. This is Raphael. Looking to pick out McLean, he gets there, he gets around the Kevin Turner, he's brought down and referee McDonald has no choice it seems but to point to the penalty spot. And is this going to be a red card? Another one issued, it is. He was the last man on that occasion. Kevin Turner. And he's been sent off for a foul committed in the 89th on Sadeo McLean. Yeah, really disappointing there for the Maruga keeper. That red card ends his evening. The referee, however, reverses his decision, just gives him a yellow. That's maybe a on strange turn of events. Maybe he's wearing a headset and got some advice from one of the other video assistants, Jovan. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he saw lack of, as we mentioned earlier, cover for the goalkeeper position from on that Maruga FC bench. So referee McDonald reverses his decision. But it's still the hot seat for Turner. He will face Sadale McLean who's on a hat trick. McLean interestingly to the left of screen has turned his back on goal as referee McDonald has a brief discussion with his fourth official. Perhaps not wanting to be distracted or put off by what's happening or what might happen on the goal line. Is the referee taking back the, the penalty? No, he's not. Okay. So McLean now on a hat-trick could make this 
6-1 into added on time. Three minutes of them just displayed by referee Nyron. What a composed penalty kick. Sadale McLean, hat-trick hero today for AC Port of Spain as they lead Maruga FC six goals to one into added on time. Yeah, a bit of cheek there from McLean. Turner instead of dealing with the disappointment of a red card has to deal with seeing a Panenka should he watch this team should he watch the replay of this match there we see McLean with a very composed run up composed finish stinks it over the Maruga keeper So just over a minute and a half left in three minutes additional. AC Port of Spain six, Maruga FC one. Your thoughts on what, what has transpired here, Jovan? Yeah, good game from both teams, I think. Scoreline doesn't do Maruga any justice. But it has been an efficient performance by ACPOS to get these six goals. Sudeil so McLean with a hat trick. But really, the midfield, the backbone of this ACPOS performance. Punanjanan has been a tireless worker as usual throughout the midfield. The brain trust or the creative head of this team, Che Benny. It's also helped guide the tempo of this match as we see a Maruga corner. Deep into time added on. Sent back in there by La Fortune. Will go all the way out for a throw. Just about 20 seconds remaining in this match. Referee McDonald just checking his watch. And that's it. 6 1 the final score here at the Arima Velodrome in this first match of a double header. On day two of match day, match week eighth. Solid performance by ACPOS to carve out a 6 1 win over Maruga FC. It's their second victory in as many weeks. Second victory in the Ascension Tournament. As the teams congratulate each other on a match well done. Here we see the first half highlights beginning with the opening goal by Poon Anjaran. Well headed past that keeper Kerval Turner. In the 39th minute, the shot by Che Benny gave Turner a couple hiccups, a couple butterflies. Maruga couldn't get it right. But ACPOS getting it right at the start of the second half. That goal from Say Charles just beating the keeper on his near post. Charles celebrating what had been redemption for him after a first half of offsides. This one falling to Prowell. Let up by him. Prowell finding Che Benny on this occasion. He gave the keeper the slip before slipping in the third. 3-0 at this point. Benny again. Attacking. Frustrated there by the Maruga defense. Dogged at times. 
and putting it into orbit. This fall by the substitute Rivers, earning him a yellow card. Free kick by Benny was also excellent. Well saved by Turner to match. There you see Sudale McLean comforting his midfield maestro. Charles looking for something here. Couldn't get it. A nasty challenge there on Turner. Very high boot, earning the substitute. Isaiah McLean, red card. Straight red after about three minutes on the pitch. Turner would be okay. There was a yellow as well for Kuvel Jeremiah, the Maruga center forward. For the first of Sadale McLean's goals. This one taken very classily. Tiba Charles, speaking of class, beating three men on his way in. McLean taking plaudits for his goal. Charles putting the moves on the ACPOS defense. To make it 5 1. That shot there by John was well saved by Jadel Poon Lewis. Here was McLean's second. Similar to the first, popping up at that far post from a Jabari Raphael service. Then, the moment of the hat trick, a bit of confusion. Looked to be a red card for Kervel Turner. Straight red from referee Jassy McDonald. He rescinded his decision for a yellow, but McLean would not be denied. Beautiful dink to make it 6-1. And round out that performance, just putting the cherry on top for AC Port of Spain. It's been a good evening for them. They're racking up these wins now. Now we'll take a moment to hear the thoughts from the side, from the Maruga coach, Dernal Maskell. Light um, from this Maruga FC team. Um, well, first let me start by um, saying, you know, this league is a measuring tool for, for most teams here. And every game we walk with our checklist. So we've been checking off a few stuff as, as the um, tournament goes along. So hopefully by next round we should be we should actually find our legs and be ready to compete. Yeah, how do you keep uh, the team motivated after a, res a result like this evening? Well, you'll be you'll be um, shocked to know that training sessions are very competitive. We have yet to find a solid eleven. So the guys themselves, they are motivated. They are ready. Everybody's still eager for that taste to hit the pitch. So training sessions have been very competitive from since the beginning to now. And I'm, as a coach, you'll definitely be grateful for, for such an environment to work in. But like I said, we have yet to find the crew that really gels and, you know, to get, to get the results. Round one coming to, to close soon. Um, I guess, you know, what's, what's the ambition for the second round? And certainly, what have you seen? What have you learned, you know, in these first eight matches? Um, well, this is a, an ideal environment for football, having had the pandemic and all of that. I must give kudos to the to the competition managers and directors and what have you. And um, like I said, it's a measuring tool. And we came in here with some goals. And when we go back home after this tournament, we'll be ready for the task at hand. All right. Thank you very much, Donald Mascal, Maruga FC head coach. Yeah, we heard from Donald Mascal, the Maruga FC head coach. Returning for the first time in a bit to the bench. Now we'll hear from her opposite number, Walt Noriega, who's sidelined with Jassy. Walt Noriega, head coach of AC Port of Spain. Uh, when you look at the, the scoreline purely, you know, uh, an encouraging result. But definitely, um, AC Port of Spain still not yet in stride. Uh, first half, only 1-0 only and certainly all uh, exploded in the second. What are your thoughts on, on reflections of, of, of this match? 
Uh, well, the team started off slow in the first half. And when they get into the dressing room, I ask them to raise the intensity and be a little more hungry in the attacking third of the pitch. And they, I think they did the job well in the second half. Also, as the previous coach would have alluded, it seems as though AC Port of Spain is still sort of tinkering with the with the eleven. Um, the spine is there, but I guess how do you I guess keep players on their toes moving into the close of this first round? Uh, it's about the work that they do in training. So if they're giving me something in training, I'll give them the opportunity to show that in the game. So it's really up to the boys to put in the work in training so that they get the opportunity on the match days. Back-to-back -back wins for AC Port of Spain. Um, things looking up heading to the close of the first round? Ah, uh, yeah. So I'll be grateful for that. I mean, the first win, they took a long time. But we, the work we was doing, we know that it would have come. And I just hope that the boys could maintain the momentum going into the second round. And finally, coach, you know, um, what, what is the plan, you know, in this next upcoming week of training to attack the next fixture? Uh, well, the next fixture is the Lokita Rangers. We know the threat that they possess, so the work will be more to be able to contain them defensively. And when we do get the opportunities to compose ourselves and take the chances. AC Port of Spain head coach Walt Norega, thank you. That was the AC Port of Spain head coach. Doesn't look too happy about it, but he has two straight wins from his team on this ground. Done really well this evening to rack up a 6-1 win over Maruga FC. Now we'll hear from the man of the match, the hat-trick hero, Sadale McLean. Stong says with Jassy. The match ball goes this afternoon to Sadale McLean, a hat-trick hero for AC Port of Spain. Sadale, your reflections on the performance overall and certainly your personal performance tonight. I mean, the first half was a bit slow. We started a bit slow, and uh, we were trying to possess the ball and trying to get behind the defenders. But uh, it was a little tough because I believe Muruga is a first half team. They have a lot of energy as they are youths. So, second half, we came out and tried to increase our game, tried to complete the passes and try to get behind their back. And second half, we were a little more effective. Your personal performance tonight, you know, how do you look upon it? I mean, uh, I was under pressure this week in training, trying to get the ball behind the net, you know. I've been uh, under the talent of pressure as one of the talents, one of the team, trying to get goals. So, um, my coach was just telling me to keep going at it, try to get behind the keeper, try to shoot on target, and it will come, man. I just work hard, and I obtained the hat-trick. Yeah, um, walk us through the, the efforts tonight, um, the final goal of penalty, but the previous two as well, two well-taken goals. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I tend to stay focused even though I'm not on the ball, so I anticipate any loose balls behind defenders because I have a lot of pace, so I was just anticipating any loose balls and I obtain it and run behind the defenders and do good after that. Thank you very much, Sadie McLean, hat-trick hero, man of the match in this early encounter at the Arima Velodrome. AC Port of Spain coming out 5-1 winners over the opponents from Maruga FC. Stay tuned, the Ascension Tournament of Trinidad and Tobago continues after this with Game 2 from the Arima Velodrome. Real West Fort United taking on Deportivo Point Fortin.
The situation we have here is that these characters, and I refer to them as pests, right? What they are doing is destroying our country, but not on my watch. No street, no turf, no block shall belong to these cockroaches, right? It's no longer business as usual. Happy hour is over. If they don't fear God, at least they will fear Terminix. Have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country? <laughs> I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Ladenstone come here for the carnival if, if you'll interview me. But how could you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what will you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. What is television? It seems like a simple question, but television means different things to different people. We in the Caribbean are very unique people. That's why we need unique television. Welcome to m and &E TV, where we showcase our lives in the Caribbean. m and &E TV is about us, the special way we talk, the way we walk, dance, move, m and &E TV is about me, it's about you, m and &E TV is about our amazing Caribbean experience. The Arima Velodrome is the venue, the scene of match number two this afternoon in the Ascension Tournament of Trinidad and Tobago. Real West Fort United will be taking on Deportivo Point Fortin. Two teams eager to continue their form in this competition. Of course, Deportivo Point Fortin the team in better form than their opponents this afternoon, Real West Fort. Certainly they'll want to address that this evening at kickoff. Ahead of kickoff, we spoke to representatives on either side about their thoughts on this evening's pending fixture. Match two of this afternoon's double header will feature Deportivo Point Fortin taking on Real West Fort United. Of course, we have from Deportivo Ronald Paul. You're all beginning to make some strides and gain some momentum in this competition. Will that continue this evening? Very important for us. We have been um, preparing during the week. So our aim this afternoon is to obviously get three points. Yeah. Um, any changes in terms of the lineup this afternoon that we can anticipate? No. Well, our coach have been planning this whole week. So whatever he puts out there, we'll make the most of it. You know, try to do our best. So no big changes. Just we're coming to the end of the first round, and of course Deportivo looking to get a little bit higher up the table. Last night's matches would have certainly um, uh, given you all some encouragement that three points today will certainly be in your favor. Yeah, well, we are just looking to take our time, you know, take every match step by step, keep staying focused on what the coach have been putting out there for us and sticking to our game plan, which is most important, and taking it game by game. Thoughts on the opponents today, Real West Fort? Obviously, they are a good team, good players, but we are also focused on what we have to do and our three points is what we are focused on today. All right, great. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Karen Cummings, Real West Fort United. Unfortunate result against AC Port of Spain last weekend. What have you guys adjusted coming into this weekend's match? 
No, well, today's game, we're looking at new legs, fresh legs, younger players to come and get the work. The senior players from the rest of the games started to get a little weary and tired, so we make some adjustments to come and get the three points today. What was your assessment of the last match? Where did it go wrong? And how, I guess, would you guys seek to address that this afternoon? I feel we didn't manage the game properly. Um, when you score on teams, you know, 1-0 is one of the hardest results to hold. One goal and the team back in the game and the confidence boost. But I feel we could have managed the game better. This Deportivo team that you guys will take on this afternoon is gaining momentum, um, getting some favorable results in the last couple of outings. Are you mindful of that? Well, clearly, you know, the South team is a good team. You got to give them kudos to that. There's a good coaching staff, good players. But we're not here to do that. We come for the three points as well and we're going to take it today. Uh, thank confident. you very much. Karen Ball Press Cummings. We have an exciting one on our hands this afternoon. Real West Fort United taking on Deportivo Point Fortin. And of course, as you just heard from players on either side, three points is the mission. It, it's all geared towards improving their standings in the table of the Ascension Tournament of Trinidad and Tobago, which we see is headed by Terminix La Hockita Rangers for the moment. But Deportivo Point Fortin with a win today could head into the top four for the first time in this tournament because they are fifth on 11 points their opponents this afternoon real west fort united they are on seven points and of course they can go ahead of their port of spain neighbors with a win as well in this evening's encounter maruga fc who we just saw suffering another heavy defeat remain nailed to the bottom of the table However, AC Port of Spain, with that three points gained, they move on up to sixth position on nine points. We'll have a look at how these teams will approach this evening's matchup. First up, Real West Fort. Back in goal for them is Jack Poon Lewis after uh, an encouraging performance by the number two last weekend, young Theon Brown. Brendan Creed is also in their back line. Hailey Farrell also comes in, so too Rashawn Murphy, Josiah Joseph, Rivaldo Brown, Caleb Keel, Shane Davidson, Isaiah Primus, and Reagan Galto. So all in all, the only two players from last weekend's defeat to AC Port of Spain, Karen Ballpest Cummings and Brendan Creed, they've gone with almost a, a complete revamp of their starting 11 today, hoping to come away with the win. On the other side of the half line, will be Deportivo Point Fortin. Marvin Phillip, who missed the last weekend's uh, encounter, is back in the starting lineup. Andre Etienne and Ronald Paul will be at the, co the core of their defense. Isaiah Garcia is also the exciting wing back. Justin Cornwall, Andre Pacheco, that well-experienced journeyman. Jordan Riley is also into the starting line lineup. So too is Nathaniel Garcia, Mark Ramdeen, Hutton Hector, another one of their experienced players, and Akinola Gregory up top. So interesting lineup here for Deportivo Point Fortin. Certainly they've gone with experience and the explosiveness on the flanks of Jordan Riley and Young Cornwall, hoping to put West Fort United on the back foot as early as possible and for as long a period as possible. It's coming up next here at the Arima Velodrome. Deportivo Point Fortin taking on Real West Fort United. This is the Ascension Tournament of Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, we'll be bringing you all of the action live. Earlier, we would have seen, as mentioned, AC Port of Spain cruising to a win. They really came to life in the second half of that one against Maruga FC. It's been a really tough time of things in this Ascension Tournament for the team from Maruga but most importantly through the thoughts of their head coach Daniel Mascal they continue to plug in weekly here in this Ascension Tournament we'll take a really short break and come back ahead of kickoff in this one
what is television? It seems like a simple question, but television means different things to different people. We in the Caribbean are very unique people. That's why we need unique television. Welcome to m and &E TV, where we showcase our lives in the Caribbean. m and &E TV is about us, the special way we talk, the way we walk, dance, move. m and &E TV is about me. It's about you. m and &E TV is about our amazing Caribbean experience. Again for the second match in this double header from the Arima Velodrome, Depot PF in their multicolored orange, blue, and white kit. West Fort in their baby blue with blue socks. Referees for this match, Quincy Williams is the man with the whistle. AR1 is Johan Cornell. Odin Brewster is AR2. Marlon Perus is the fourth. Match commissioner is Natasha Hinkson. As we see, captains Karen Baldpest Cummings. Four West Fort. And Marvin Phillip for Depot PF. Two national players. Great stature. Marvin Phillip, of course, long time number one for the red, white, and black. Cummings, man in and out of the national setup, but certainly not lacking for talent. As we see that Depot PF team bonding for one last time before they run out against these men here there's Cummings in your picture looks to be playing a little higher up the pitch than he did in the last match PF break the huddle that man in your center center of your picture the number nine 99 sorry Andre Pacheco will be key to their hopes this afternoon this evening at the velodrome he and Nathaniel Garcia will look to anchor this depot midfield and allow the forwards likes of Ram Dean, Riley, Hector and Gregory to express themselves in the attacking third West Fort get us started Yes, Jovan, of course, the Real West Fort team almost entirely revamped from last weekend. The only starters making it into the starting lineup today, Cummings and Brendan Creed, the defender. Already they are put onto the back foot there by Deportivo Port PF. And that cross just trimming the afro stylish afro at that of the big man at the back there for real west fort early free kick here for deportivo Hutton hector floats this one out aiming for ram dean he can't keep it in Cummings 
neat exchange, but that ball is left short. And possession returned to Depot. Cummins now turning nicely. <laughs> and a smacking intervention there by Andre Etienne. Here comes Isaiah Garcia, that bombarding right fullback of Depot. Unable to pick out a teammate. Randine shows a bit too much of it and a crunching tackle coming in again from that's Hailey Farrell one of the men coming in for West Fort he'll have some work to do trying to contain the tricky Mark Randine on this near side Good save by Jacques Poon Lewis. But he's beaten on the follow up there. Three, four minutes into the fourth minute. Jacques Poon Lewis, whose brother Jadel was between the sticks. Good save there from Garcia before, I believe that's Akinola Gregory on the follow up. Makes it 1-0 to Deportivo Point Fortin. Yeah, really quick start here from Depo. Poon Lewis would have been let down by his centre-backs. Not reacting in time to stop that one. After a good save. West Fort with it. Uh, West Fort through as they begin the recovery effort it's with Cummings. Cummings return in possession all the way back. Like Shane Davidson it's with Hector. Ramdeen. Ramdeen just missing out there. This is Reagan Golto. Sean Murphy. It's good play there from Etienne to stop ball to one out. Crunching tackle straight through the back of Mark Ramdeen from Josiah Joseph. Earns him first yellow of the match. Referee Williams producing the first card. Just the six minutes. It's well deserved. Two footed came through the back of Ramdeen. You have to find other ways to stop the enterprising former Naparima College winger. So Deportivo point 14 looking for more that uh, floated cross from Isaiah Garcia allowing Poon Lewis to call for it. This is a good ball out to that far side. 
But Garcia, sturdy defender he is. Wins back possession for Deportivo and they come forward now. Garcia, a bit more inward, infield now, still going. This is Gregory, the goal scorer in the fourth minute. Trying to weave something toward Jordan Riley. Cut out by the Real West Fort defense and now cleared by goalkeeper Poon Lewis. Ivan clearance there, but only lands to this one, and this is a shot. So that will be a confidence booster for Real West Fort. The man collecting and shooting on the turn for them on that occasion. A dipping shot. Reagan Golto. They're not troubling Marvin Phillip just yet. It'll take some doing. It's a smart into the air. Eventually cleared by Depo. Covered by Joseph. It's with Garcia. Pachico. Isaiah Garcia. This one is up into attack. Looking for the other Garcia, Nathaniel. Depot through. Garcia battling there with Kilev Kiel. Great through ball, good attempt at the through ball from Pacheco, looking for Ramdin. Poon Lewis sends this one up pitch. It's back with Pacheco. Garcia and Pacheco exchanging some passes. That is a great outlet pass one time. This is into the box. Hector. Poon Lewis will smother that ball after some good defending from his men. Hector again. You see how Depot PF want to play? Want to exploit those little spaces, whatever little holes may exist in this West Fort defense. They have the goal advantage that would settle their nerves. But here come West Fort. Joseph losing out that time. It's back with Cummings. He decides to go for it all alone. Won't get the result he desired. But a good signal of intent from the West Fort captain. Man known as Ball Pest or simply Pest. You may come to know why as this match continues to progress. It's good work from Gregory to give it to Pacheco. It's here with Garcia. It's good defense there by Cummings. Takes his time, looks for a through ball. Goes all the way to Philip. It's a wonderful ball across field for Mark Ramdeen. Great touch here. Spreads it back across. That shot is high and wide from Garcia, but really good approach there from Depot PF. certainly have a complement of great passes in their midfield that center three Garcia Pacheco and Hutton Hector played short can play it long great range of passing among them
Yeah, Poon Lewis. It's already conceded this afternoon. Has been solid throughout this tournament for West Fort. There's a reason he's their number one. He missed out last weekend in favor of Theon Brown, who didn't do too badly as, at all. Some fantastic saves before he was eventually beaten. And I think most keepers would have been beaten by that Che Benny double. Yeah, two very sublime finishes there from the ACPOS talisman. Picked up another this evening. Meanwhile, here comes Deportivo again through Isaiah Garcia. His cross is cut out and now Real Westford try to get it clear. They are unable to do so before a foul is committed there on Rashawn Murphy. They played quickly, Caleb Kiel. This is Karen Cummings now bringing it forward. Plays it intricately to Josiah Joseph. He has two in attendance, including Ram Dean. He's pulling and tugging at the tiny winger. Eventually earns the free kick for Deportivo. This is Ram Dean again. Gets onto the end of it. Nice first touch. Gets inside his man, Haile Farrell. And referee Quincy Williams had a good view of it. Yeah, Farrell with his work cut out for him this evening. Ram Dean already showing good touch. Full of pace and trickery. But it is Hutton Hector and Nathaniel Garcia who will preside over this free kick for Depot PF. Garcia just leaving it to Hector. Six in the box for Depot. That Hector goes straight to Poon Lewis. This is a depot throw on the far side. Will be taken by Isaiah Garcia. So despite the early goal, teams looking pretty well matched. Yeah, Jovan, I think uh, Real Westford certainly wouldn't be too downtrodden after falling behind in the fourth minute. They've certainly begun gradually to play their football. They've gotten forward on at least a few occasions. Karen Cummings, yeah, Dean Jaman had a, a strike from distance. Another strike from quite some way out came in from Regan Golto as well. So they're slowly coming into their own Real West Fort. But certainly against uh, Deportivo Point Fort inside with as much quality as this one does possess, they'll have to be extra vigilant. This is Cummings now, he has support either side, right and left. Golto makes a check inside. This is Pest. Plays this one over to Isaiah Primus, who wins a corner kick off of Isaiah Garcia, or so he thought. The 
The flag has gone up on this near side. That's assistant referee Johan Cornelius' flag for offside. Gordon Peer, manager, co-founder of Real West Fort United. Certainly, in this picture, less vocal than I know him to be. Certainly, anyone who has played football with him knows him to be. But in all fairness, not too much for him to be too exaggerated about or agitated rather so far from uh, in this real west fort performance as we see there they hunted down and regained possession and they come forward now but a player is down that's deportivo's ronald paul one of the central defenders certainly must have caught the uh, flailing arm there of Karen Cummings referee Williams beginning or oh, about to restart play instructing the Deportivo players to stand off and allow possession to be returned to Real West Fort. They waste it. Here comes Ramdeen. Appears to face through his man there. And then the pass to Cornwall just overcooked, running out of touch. Yeah, first looks at Ramdeen. Seems to be up for it today. It's going to give Farrell on this side a lot of thinking to do certainly has already in this match here he is again cheeky no look pass there into Nathaniel Garcia and they're able to make some progress up the field Deportivo point 14 their head coach is Selvon Francis the man just seen giving additional instructions. This is a throw in looking for Gregory, who is sneaking around the back door. He got the goal. Seems like an, et an eternity ago, just about in the fourth minute, 15 minutes ago, roughly. That puts Deportivo point 14 into this 1-0 lead against Real Westford. This is Karen Cummings though. Tussling with Paul that time. Unable to keep it in and it's a Deportivo throw in. Cummings back to Farrell. This is a good ball into Josiah Joseph. Plays it over the top to Isaiah Primus. He's waiting for it to drop. Garcia was over in a flash. And they got a goal kick out of it. It's with Garcia now. Isaiah Garcia, that is. Brings it up to the halfway line before passing it off to Jordan Riley and a tackle coming in there from Brendan Creed. Referee Williams goes over just to say to Creed, I've seen, I've seen that one and I'm warning you to tone it down a bit. Deportivo now, Pacheco to Etienne. He plays this one forward. Ramdin is in there. Good flick on. This is Hutton Hector now. Anything on his right, right foot is as good as goal, but that time... Defensive intervention there by Shane Davidson 
allows Poon Lewis to hold on. But Real West Ford give it away again. This is Hector. This cross is aimed at Gregory, just arriving, headed away. Garcia keeps it up. And this is Rashawn Murphy to Josiah Joseph now for Real West Fort. Good stuff here from the Port of Spain unit. Cummings just trying to set Murphy off on a run on this near side. So we're just about halfway through the first half. Deportivo point Fortin leading 1-0 against Real West Fort United. And a really contrasting image there of Hutton Hector lined up alongside Pharrell. Not the tallest of players. Is he Hector? But certainly a man of stature when it comes to the local game. Yeah, giant with the ball at his feet is Hutton Hector. His opponents will know. Comes with a big reputation. The Depot PF Central midfielder. So it's been these most recent exchanges a battle for midfield. The Deportivo Point Fortin players asking for the offside flag that time and it didn't come before we see Marvin Phillip and certainly his good friend and teammate Karen Cummings becoming entangled that time. Not in the Will and Jada Pinkett Smith type of way but certainly something a bit more friendly than that entanglement that famous Hollywood entanglement that one's a, that one was a bit friendly as well uh, Jesse as far as I remember I stand corrected <laughs> you are in fact correct Certainly no friends here. Stepo and West Fort go at it. Ooh, Ramdeen and Cornwall just not on the same page. Cornwall gets it back though. This is Akinola Gregory. <laughs> that would have been something. Davidson diving in there. It's perhaps telling to see Andrew Pacheco skipping a tackle. He's not the youngest. No spring chicken is he. But that time just gliding past the diving tackle of Shane Davidson. And before that attack eventually fizzled out to nothing. Still it's a good very, to see. Still a very... Elegant player is Andre Pacheco. Charged with the responsibility of protecting the ball and being one of the architects of this Depot PF performance. Yeah, certainly very much the modern day pivot, midfield pivot. The play just funnels through him. And he's happy to play that role. Still banging in the goals as well. He got a goal last weekend in their 2-0 victory. And here he is on the ball overseeing this free kick.
testament to their quality that 2-0 victory came against Canupia one of the teams that started very brilliantly in this tournament but this is a good opportunity it's flashed away by the West Ford defense yeah that was a good delivery set piece delivery there from Pacheco right onto the head of a Deportivo player actually but the power couldn't be found to put it past Poon Lewis meanwhile this is Gregory to Jordan Riley we haven't seen much of him he's come in field now and this is Hutton Hector the ball aimed at the penalty spot and this is Riley good skill still alive for point Fortin throwing himself about there is Isaiah Garcia he gets it back now to Hector good delivery outside of the boot before it's headed away by Farrell to Cummins and then cleared all the way upfield Etienne will have to chase Ops not to go back to Marvin Phillip at least not for now here's the TNT number one to Ronel Paul and Cornwall can't keep it in so approaching half an hour's play gone Deportivo Point Fortin has been the more intent team this afternoon, this evening. But that's not to say that Real Westford haven't been able to come forward as we saw on that occasion. A good cross from Isaiah Primus, but Ray Galto beaten to it by Marvin Phillip. It's come all the way in the other direction. This is Gregory, but the offside flag goes up on that far side. I'm not too sure, but again who am i to go against the sharp eyes of marlon odin brewster rather on that far side the assistant referee For sure, we'd be needing a refresher course in the referee, in refereeing. Some of these calls we've thought differently from these referees, but that's why they make the big bucks. Quite correct. Again. Cummins now. He has Pacheco for company. Plays it now to Creed. Ah, that ball looking towards Primus on the outside of him. He is a defender, so he was a bit shot shy, as expected on that attempt. Perhaps didn't realize that the goal had opened up in front of him. Inviting a shot on Marvin Phillips' goal. That time, Brendan Creed misplaced his pass instead Westfort have shown that they are more than capable of troubling this this man's goal Marvin Phillip the depot captain however depot are the ones who have settled first doing all the right things, doing them well. It's Ramdeen to Pacheco. Picks up the foul. Pacheco, according to where you're from in this country. Yeah, Jovan, that's the old case of uh, Pacheco, Pacheco. Tomato, tomato. Forgive me. So this one just over half an hour gone. Sees Deportivo point Fortin maintaining a one goal lead. A goal that was scored all the way back in the fourth minute by their frontman Akinola Gregory following up on a 
Rebound forced by Nathaniel Garcia's shot. Out of frame there. Good touch by the sideline cameraman. This is another giveaway. Greg Re rather Riley to Garcia and a miss hit there. A rare miss hit that at that from the eldest Garcia brother. And it brings Pest now into play. <laughs> so hesitant is he to try his right foot that he passes up the opportunity for a shot. And now it's out wide to Primus and that's a good delivery headed away there by Andre Etienne. He had to be certain of that header. He didn't receive a call from the, his goalkeeper Marvin Phillip. And in the end, head puts it out of play for a Real West Fort United corner kick. Primus has come over on this near side from his position on the left. Josiah Joseph has gone across to the other flank and it's Primus's corner to Murphy can't get a telling touch and went forward and trying to come forward Hutton Hector though eased off of it by Rivaldo Brown a mix up this is Caleb Kiel over pushes it and a stiff tackle coming in there by Etienne sends it the other way so a bit of ping pong there. Good skill by Joseph before he loses out to Nathaniel Garcia. Aiming at Riley and Poon Lewis comes and uses his head to good effect. Good stuff there by the Port of Spain goalkeeper. Yeah, good improvisation by Poon Lewis to clear his lines. Meanwhile, Karen Cummings brings it forward for Real West Ford, he gets it back now. Cheeky flick towards Primus, who was standing in an offside position. Referee Cornelius that time was right in line. Able to spot that the player had gone over the offside threshold. A couple amateur referees in the stands disagreeing there's plenty of that going around Deportivo point four to now Garcia serves the, what's in front of him he gets it to Gregory Gregory back to Isaiah Garcia Ramdin shows for it can't get past Kalev Kiev though who's been brought in to sort of protect that Real West Ford back line. This is Murphy. Outside of him is Primus. Poor first touch allows Justin Cornwall to swoop in. And now here comes Ramdeen. Tripped up by Primus to the disagreement of the Real West Ford bench. The infringement happened just in front of them and a chorus of oars went up as the referee blew Quincy Williams that time in favor of Deportivo. Now here's Hutton Hector. Gives it away. Good intervention, intervention there by the rangy, lanky player. That is Farrell. So Real Westford not doing too badly. Under 10 minutes remaining in this first period. They trail one goal to nil, but they've certainly come onto the front foot with more regularity in the last few minutes. And here they are again, winning possession high. This is Primus. This is Murphy. It's back with Primus now. Doesn't seem to be too assured. And that's a good looking ball in by Murphy. From the thigh of Isaiah Garcia to the thigh of Marvin Phillip. But it's back with Real Westford. Again, they've come forward with more purpose as this half has worn on. That time, Farrell can't keep the ball in play. Yeah, good spell of possession for Westford. 
the way they've been playing it looks almost like a matter of time before they find a way back into this match really good pressure and still really good composure with the ball even in key areas here's Pacheco that ball is well cleared by the West Fort defense recovered again by Garcia up from right back is in the box and gets a penalty it's great work by the Depo right back to win himself a penalty. Yes, Jovan. I mean, he's certainly a very adventurous player. Doesn't stay at home too much. And this time he was marauding that right flank, inviting the challenges. And I'm not too sure if there was a a lot of contact there but Quincy Williams pointed to the spot without hesitation in this the 38th minute Garcia making the most of the contact it's a great effect just like that Depo have another opportunity to shake the old onion bag give the professor something to think about down on that West Fort bench. So Isaiah Garcia is still receiving treatment. He's brought to his feet now. But he leaves the field quite gingerly after that tackle it seemed to be uh, Kiel, Kiel trailing the Deportivo wing back on that occasion maybe he just trod on the heel of Garcia that time which is what compelled referee Williams to point to the spot and we'll have a Deportivo point fourteen penalty kick Akinola Gregory, the man who's put them 1-0 ahead in the fourth minute. Seems to be the man standing over it this time. Jack Poon Lewis. The real Westford goalkeeper intends to keep this one out. Can he? He dives the right way, but it just goes under him. And he seems to have also injured himself, attempting to keep that one out. He couldn't in the end. It's 2-0 to Deportivo Point Fortin, thanks to that man, Akinola Gregory's second of the evening. Yeah, tidy little double for Gregory. Poon Lewis just feeling his hand. Looks to be his right hand. As Garcia re-enters the arena so it's a good kick low chose his corner he went for it without hesitating Poon Lewis went the right way and just seemed to stub his hand in the ground trying to make the save which he couldn't in the end and it's just like that 2-0 to Deportivo PF on Real West Fort United and they're coming again in search of more this is Gregory again he has Ramdeen and Riley across the area it comes now to Riley he lays it back for Hutton Hector I've seen him done, done better and the player now riding in agony is Kiel seemed to be caught by Hector's follow-through But Hector had ideas of Hutton Hector of all as that ball came back invitingly, tried to put his boot through it. And then just as, as he followed through, his knee seemed to strike the back of Kiel's noggin. Yeah, no real menace from Hector there, but 
doesn't take away from the agony that that player is in. And now he's suggesting that some of the contact actually was made onto his shoulder as well as the side of the, the neck there. Here comes Real West Fort, man for all seasons. In a very literal sense, he is the chief cook and bottle washer of this team, Gordon Pear. As we Head see motivator coming up. as well. Certainly, indeed. Gaffer. And there's a concussion test seeming to be carried out on Kiel. Of course, as far as the science of the modern game goes, there is no chance to be taken with head injuries. Players must subject themselves and sufficiently pass a concussion test before they are allowed to, re to continue playing. Yeah, one of the many safeguards put in place by the FIFA to ensure both player safety and an enjoyable experience for all. This cross is in the box. Coast to coast, really. Garcia isn't able to chase it down. So as we approach the end of the first half in this one, it's Deportivo 2, Real West Fort 0. A double scored by Akinola Gregory. He got his first in the fourth minute. His second in the 40th from the penalty spot. To give Point Fort in the lead. A much needed one. Remember with three points today they'll enter or approach the top four. Stalking Kunupia FC. The team currently occupying that position. Yeah, Depot began with a loss and two draws, but since then they've really shown their quality. Only blemish on their record since then has been a 1-0 defeat to the indomitable La Hockata Rangers. It's a great touch there. From Kiel, doesn't find his player, it's out from Hector. Cummings now so elegantly he turns his man Riley, plays this one into the feet of Golto, can't get the return. And again, this is Riley cut out by Rivaldo Brown. Now it's back with Real Westford. Good touch there by Primus into Cummins. Gets it back to Primus. He'll swing across in. But that's really catching practice for Marvin Phillip. Sometimes perhaps even more troubled in the warm-up. Gregory and Davidson involved in a bit of a tussle there. And Davidson actually really lucky. He was pulling and tugging at the player's uniform. Gregory refused to go down and so referee Williams doesn't have to intervene. Yeah, good hold up there from Gregory. Looking for this man, Mark Ramdeen. As the half comes to an end, it's 2-0 to Depot PF. We see the shake of the head from that man. Shane Davidson. His defense has been breached twice this evening. Fourth minute. And then from the penalty spot in the 40th. But it's aside from point four in that lead. Halftime in the second match from the Arima Velodrome. It's 2-0.
Depo PF versus Westford. We'll be right back with highlights from this first half. we have here is that these characters and I refer to them as pests right what they are doing is destroying our country but not on my watch no street no turf no block shall belong to these cockroaches right it's no longer business as usual happy hour is over if they don't fear God at least they will fear Terminix have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across the country <laughs> I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago I wonder if Roach Ladenstone come here for the carnival, if, if you'll interview me. But how can you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a Roach jumps in front of you now, what would you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord, Father. <laughs> Pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. Our newly renovated bathrooms are always kept in a clean working order. Need repairs and maintenance? We have you covered. Our qualified workmen will get the job done. Boat storages. From our marina, you can easily push off for a family sailing trip. Or out fishing with the boys. experience with friends. Boat repairs, secured parking, extensive camera system, boat charters, boat rentals, down the island parties. Contact us at 1-868-634. 1653 Lasso Frame Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Life's better on a boat. Back at the Arima Village Room. In anticipation of second half in this match between Depot PF and Westford. But before that, let's look at the highlights from this first half. Yeah, Deportivo point four ten as early as the, the fourth minute they found the back of the net. Nathaniel Garcia that time spanking his effort, which was saved by Poon Lewis, but only managing to get it to the feet of Akinola Gregory. After that, the point four ten team continued to keep Real Westford on the back foot. Mark Randine in particular was troublesome. That free kick from Hilton Hector unable to trouble Poon Lewis further though. This time, 
Hector put it over the bar, but the offside flag had gone before. And then we saw just the lack of composure from the Real Westford team going forward. While Ramdeen continued to be a nuisance. However, in the 38th minute, Point Fortin was awarded a penalty as Isaiah Garcia, the marauding right back, was cut down in the penalty area. Referee Quincy Williams are judging that it was indeed a foul and Gregory was able to put it beneath Poon Lewis for his double and Deportivo Point Fortin's double at that. It put them into a 2-0 lead despite some good looks as that first half progressed. And as things stand, they remain leaders in this one. Deportivo Point Fortin 2 Real West Fort United nil. That's the halftime score. Stick around, second half commentary and highlights still to come. questions that no other media house would ask so you know shed light on those things that are in the dark those stories that no one else wants to cover um i grew up reading the guardian actually it's a household name about the guardian one thing that i like the human interest stories have increased I see the investigative pieces on the human trafficking i find that very interesting sam you go more in depth on sports especially local sports and that's one of my highlights for the guardian yeah i've been in guys and the guardian started coming Started coming out, started working. I was a newspaper man. <laughs> Could the stories that are being covered are well detailed and you get more facts? At this point in time, I really like the Spanish section. I'm glad I like it. Mm, like to know everything, what is going on with us. Also, I think the editorials, I think they're doing a good job and they're speaking in truth and you know, they, they're challenging the government to. Uh, to make things better. Me in particular of recently, the last two, three months I've been reading the garden. I'm seeing a lot of news about the neighborhoods and the communities and I even saw my community featured and I was proud. The Guardian. 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 The Guardian is my first choice. What is television? It seems like a simple question, but television means different things to different people. We in the Caribbean are very unique people. That's why we need unique television. Welcome to m &E TV, where we showcase our lives in the Caribbean. m &E TV is about us, the special way we talk, the way we walk, dance, move. m &E TV is about me, it's about you, MLE TV is about our amazing Caribbean experience. We are the fourth estate. We educate we inform and we hold those in authority, politicians, business leaders and others to account. Connecting the public to the truth drives our purpose here at CNC3. When we stand behind a desk every single night, a lot of people don't know that we're a huge part of the news process. We eat, breathe and sleep news and that reflects in everything that we do as a news team. Every day we tell the stories of people's journey through life. Stories of their success, stories of their sadness, stories of their grief, stories of their glory. We're the mirror in which society looks at itself. 
when a storm is coming, everyone always thinks worst case scenario. And sometimes it may just be a brief shower or two. It's not always going to be a green veil level event. So it's important to have the most credible and accurate information coming from a verified source. Welcome, you're watching the 7 o'clock news on CNC3. Amante Del Cafe is located at Magnificent Mall, number 271 Southern Main Road, Macbean, Cuba. Amante Del Cafe. Happiness begins with brew. we have here is that these characters and I refer to them as pests right what they are doing is destroying our country but not on my watch no street no turf no block shall belong to these cockroaches right it's no longer business as usual happy hour is over if they don't fear God at least they will fear Terminix have you considered how your methods could impact on pests across your country <laughs> I find we look after the rights of pests as opposed to the rights of the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in Trinidad and Tobago. I wonder if Roach Laden's son come here for the carnival, if, if you'll interview me. But how can you defend one shot, one kill? What? You want me to throw a pillow at him? I didn't say that. No, well, if a roach jumps in front of you now, what will you do? Run. Oh, Jesus, Lord Father. <laughs> pests bothering you? Call Terminix at 672-5007 or 672-0042 or visit our website at Terminix.co.tt for a free quote and consultation. Join our fight against pests. Lasso Freight Maritime Limited, the best in marina services. Our facilities, security checks ensures that all vehicles are secured. The second half of this match between Depot PF and West Fort. Just about to get underway. It's a reminder the score is 2 0 to Depot PF. Westford with a couple of subs being introduced. The professor hoping to change his team's fortunes. The next 45 minutes. Yeah, Jovan, certainly this is at this juncture. It's the opportune moment to make the required changes and the, the judging by the players coming onto the field certainly looking to shake things up from an attacking perspective Josimar Belgrave the veteran comes in so too does Rondell Gibson and Gary Griffith the third
players coming off will be confirmed in short order. But one of them seems to be Isaiah Primus. Regan Colto also subbed off. And it looks as though Griffith III will go to the tip of despair, so to speak. As we have kickoff now in the second half, Deportivo Point Fortin versus Real West Fort United. The Southerners holding 2 0 advantage. The first half double scored by Akinola Gregory. Already, West Fort on the front foot. That's Cummings looking to make the Deportivo backline work. He is. His team a corner kick. He's an actor just doing the work on the defensive end. You have to think that the attackers will have to pull their weight in defense. As this ball comes in from Cummings. Bounces all the way out to Hector again. Second clearance. So this is a West Fort free kick. Caleb Kiel will swing it in. Drops at the feet of Isaiah Garcia who gets it away. It's back with Kiev now. Disappointing cross ball there from Gregory with Riley storming in at the far post. Here comes now West Fort. Dean to Justin Cornwall gets it back now and flashes a pass out to Gregory. Depot go all the way back to Ronel Paul and he's going all the way forward, too far forward in fact to Jack Poon Lewis for Real Westfort. Ball up from Gibson to GG the third. Earns himself a free kick. Yeah, a lot to sort out for the man just on screen, the professor, Ron Laffery. Ramby now. Turned all the way back to his toward his own goal. This is Paul.
pensive faces on the West Fort bench. Etienne plays this one into the feet of Jordan Riley. The overlap is being made by Garcia. And a good ball across the face of goal. Gregory had made his run to the first post. And now comes Cornwall. It's still alive. Gregory. Shot might open up. It doesn't. It does for Pacheco. Routine save in the end for Jack Poon Lewis. Looking for Cummings, but he can't get a telling touch to keep it in play. Arnold Gibson certainly added some pizzazz to that real West Fort attack so far. They have some defending to do here. Pacheco. Etienne to Cornwall. To rather Paul, now to Cornwall. He's being hustled now, is Paul by Josima Belgrave, but forcing the Depot player to turn possession over. It's with Creed now to Cummins on the outside of him. Gibson makes his run. Good ball back to Cummins. They're asking for a handball off of Hutton Hector, but I think his hands were in a natural position and now Deportivo trying to come forward through Nathaniel Garcia. Does well. It's with Hector now. Hector driving forward. Akinola Gregory is ahead of him. Couldn't hold it up. And both teams just taking a little bit long in this second half to settle. And certainly it's been promising stuff for Real Westford. GG the third with a weak shot that just rolls into the arms of Marvin Phillip and he bowls it out to Nathaniel Garcia now Hector Ramdin Ramdin will take on his man Pharrell sticks to his task as he did for much, much of the first half Ramdin did get the better of the Westford fullback on the odd occasion. Marvin Phillip retreat, retrieves and will scurry back into his penalty area where he can now pick the ball up with his hands. So, slow stuff in this first eight minutes of the second half. Yeah, surely after the start we had to this match, goal after only four minutes. Second half pales in comparison. Fatigue may be setting in for these players. They still have a long way to go. Pacheco, beautiful skill. I think that one counted, Jassy. It does count. Certainly, Jossie Mar Belgrave might say otherwise, but Pacheco there, the measure of composure and skill in the engine room of the field, as they call it. The epitome of engine room, even during his days as a Princess Town footballer. Of course, that popular rhythm section did, in fact, originate in Point Fortin. 
as we saw that time Jordan Riley coming forward trying to make something happen in and around the penalty area a good feat from Riley there probably did a bit too much a little over elaborate here he is again again probably trying to do too much comes now to Pacheco Hector on the turn Hector is through Pacheco takes over and that is ladies and gentlemen goal number three Deportivo Point Fortin leading over Real Westport and the two old pals see the funny side of it yeah. Hector had done all the work and Pacheco just snuck in to take it off the feet of his midfield partner and tucked it away had he missed that opportunity they wouldn't be so chummy yeah Hector taking it in stride there we see them linking up again very good turn Chico saying I'll take it from here and Poon Lewis wondering where the men in blue in front of him had evaporated to there's where it went beautiful feet from the veteran Hector big smile on his face happy it's a 3-0 lead for Depo PF That goal scored in the 55th. Andre Pacheco, the goal scorer. So it's going to be a long night for this Real West 4 team. better part of half an hour to be played still and they're already trailing but here they come now onto the front foot Kiel looking for the run of Gibson that man Garcia just never seems to stop running he's made the defensive recovery and then drives it up the field as though it's minute one or to be in Top condition again, just Speak for yourself. <laughs> Josima, this is into Gary Griffith the third now. He turns. Gets it to Gibson. He wants it back. Instead, it goes all the way out to Creed. This is a good-looking ball in, and here comes Belgrave. Ooh. Perhaps the attempt to get ahead onto it from Gibson his old teammate ahead of him threw him off there Josimar Belgrave unable to bring it down it was one of those awkward ones it was bouncing just in front of him and again as we see here maybe Gibson threw him off certainly a sumptuous ball there for Belgrave to latch on to Signs of life, good signs from this West Fort team. Belgrave again, now to Gary Griffith III. Josiah Joseph to Pharrell. Pharrell crosses it now. This is Etienne underneath, underneath it and just calmly nods it down to his goalkeeper, Marvin Phillip. Real Westport might be thinking that was the chance. Trailing 3-0. Approaching an hour. An hour gone. That was their chance to pull one back. Yeah, they're running out of time to put themselves back in this match. Gibson and Gary Griffith III exchanging neat passes there in the midfield, but the final ball still lacking and I think that's where the professor Ron Lafare was hoping to shake things up by making the substitutions in the first place so here's Deportivo Nathaniel, Nathaniel Garcia robbed of it by Cummings. And then that's just a poor pass. Easily cut out by Justin Cornwall. And he's bringing it the other way now for Deportivo. Gets it to Pacheco. Riley. 
the overlap, ever willing overlap of just of Isaiah Garcia. He does keep it in, and then taking no chances, Shane Davidson puts it out for Deportivo corner. Yeah, good engine on Garcia there. Just about. We're in the 60th minute. And he came steaming up that right side. Good energy. As Depo take their time with this corner. Just to the bottom left of your screen, there's the man, the professor. Making some alterations from his position in the dugout. Gregory with a flash there. That one harmlessly rolls up and down the cycling track here at the Arima Velodrome. It's Ascension Tournament of Trinidad and Tobago action. Match week eight. In this, the second match of your Saturday evening doubleheader and the Arima Velodrome, Deportivo Point Fortin, three, Real West Fort Dill. And Akinona Gregory double in the first half. Added to by an Andre Pacheco item scored in the 55th minute of play. Sees Point Fortin leading handsomely. Here they come. Looking for more Gregory. Squares up his man and lays it across to Riley. How did he miss? My oh my, what a chance. Jordan Riley. Jordan Riley. Jordan Riley. Even the West Fort fans behind us exclaimed, ball boy, as they saw this ball coming across. Intelligent play. Riley, when it looked easier to score, putting it in the direction of the Arima Hospital. He had Poon Lewis at his mercy with the Real West Fort goalkeeper going one way in anticipation. Riley going the other, completely making a hash of that one. What he would do to have that one back. I think back to an earlier encounter. Deportivo point fourteen at the St. James Barracks. Against Central Soccer World. Riley was a substitute in that match and Similarly, after it seemed he had a chance late in that one that seemed inevitable to go in. Somehow he conspired against himself and his teammates to miss an open goal. He had gone, he rounded the goalkeeper actually. It seems certain to score on that occasion. He may have another one here. This is Greg Wee. Ramdin lays it off to Hector and the point fourteen man blasts it low but wide. Yeah, Hector would feel that he's owed a goal, if not from Andre Pacheco, but from his own endeavor this afternoon in Arima. Here's GG3, when he threw for West Fort. Depo bring on the subs. Off is the number six, Akinola Gregory. It's replaced by Martian Watson. So no hat trick for Gregory tonight. Scored a first half double. He laid one on a platter moments ago for Jordan Riley. He's also been removed. He's replaced. 
by Ezekiel Keza. Cummings it's with Gibson makes his way out of trouble earns a free kick taken quickly by Cummings to Belgrave Gibson Farrell now up to Belgrave Cummings again Sprays this one out wide to Josiah Joseph. Several ahead of him, but a looping cross. Asking Gary Griffith III to, to try to get on. Unable to do so. And here is Isaiah Garcia. To the outside of him is Keza. He goes instead to Nathaniel Garcia. Checo gets it to Keza now. In fact, he doesn't. Throw into. Real Westfort. What might Real Westfort need to do to pull something back in this one, Jovan? I think they've been doing most things right, except for that final ball, as you observed. And of course, if you don't shoot, you can't score. They haven't had many chances on Marvin Phillips frame so they've got to be a little more enterprising against this very tidy Depot PF team switched out to Ram Dean here again he's been a thorn in the side of Hailey Farrell all match long he he's knows it he's loving it that time Pharrell bringing him down at the edge of his own penalty area and it's going to be a free kick to Deportivo Point Fortin as Pharrell goes into referee Quincy Williams's little black book certainly not as a future reference but he's cautioned for one foul too many on little Mark Ramdeen tonight Jack Poon is there constructing his wall, hoping that they'll be able to offer him some protection for what might lay ahead. Hutton Hector and Mark Rabdeen. I fancy it's going to be Hector. And we've spoken ad nauseum about his ability and some of his conquests back in the day. Or even Pacheco! <laughs> Good save! It came through the wall. Poon Lewis didn't have much time to adjust in the end he did and made a good foot save to keep it out of the back of his net this is Cummings gets it forward to Gibson he skips past Pacheco now it's with Gary Griffith the third back to Gibson and then Belgrave had stopped his run and once more a promising attack ends with no shot at Marvin Phillip. He's not had much to do. The Trinidad and Tobago number one. Cummings. Gibson on the inside gets it. Back to Cummings now. Martian Watson has to be careful. Gary Griffith the third against Garcia, the relentless Garcia. Isaiah and then Gibson losing out to Nathaniel Garcia. He gets it back. Good work. Before Watson gets it away for Deportivo. Real Westford will use the opportunity to make 
two substitutions, introducing Cornel Thomas. He'll replace the fatigued Hailey Farrell. And as he leaves the pitch, refer earlier to your dilemma. Also introduced is Ross Dowden in for Josiah Joseph. Here comes Real Westfort and that's a shot in anger from Caleb Kiel. No sting on it and appropriately dealt with by Marvin Phillip. So at this stage, just about 20 minutes left. Deportivo Point Fortin certainly comfortable in the driver's seat. And should they be able to see out this result, it will be a really happy bus ride back down to the Southern Borough. Yeah, and on the balance of this match, Depot PF looks capable of holding on to this lead unless Westfort subs begin to do the job the professor has put them on for. This ball is from Belgrave. Onto the head of Dowden. So two substitutes just as you said, Jovan. Perhaps the commentator's curse might work in their favor here on in. Josimar Belgrave with the free kick onto the head of Ross Dowden. And unlike we saw with Michel Punangeron earlier this afternoon, Dowden unable to flick that one beyond Marvin Phillip and into the back of the net. Deportivo now, that's Hector to Ramdeen. On the outside of him is Cornwall, gets it back to Ramdeen and then making a stretched clearance. Rivaldo Brown gets it away. And out of danger for Real West Fort United. Still trailing in this one. And goal scored by Akinola Gregory in the fourth and 40th minutes. And then Andre Pacheco, the man on the ball now in the 55th, sees Deportivo Point Fortin with a comfortable 3 0 lead. And they could add to that. This ball is a cross goal and just flicked off the boot of Creed and almost passed Poon Lewis. He had to be scrambling to his right to ensure that it wasn't on target. But it's going to be a Deportivo Point Fortin corner kick from that resulting from that uh, uh, attack Nathaniel Garcia goes over on the far side just arriving Andre Etienne and Mark Ramdeen it's a poor effort by Garcia's lofty standards but it's recovered now by Kiza ahead of him as always Garcia the th uh, Isaiah Garcia and uh, he puts it into that sweet spot Hutton Hector gets his goal he's worked for it Garcia who we see there congratulating him uh, Isaiah Garcia certainly has worked hard as well at that time making the overlap and whipping it across into that sweet spot Hutton Hector couldn't miss yeah again good overlap here from Garcia spots Hector's run on the far post and now Hector can 
forgive his old friend. They're both on the score sheet. In a really commanding performance for Depot PF. It's 4 0 against West Fort. 75th minute. Real could have gotten something, something from that, but Gibson, while forcing a save out of Marvin Phillip, doesn't trouble him too much. And now here come Deportivo once more. It's with Hector, checks inside, lays it back now to Watson. Cornwall goes back to Paul. Here's Kizano. Hurried off of it. And this is Karen Cummings. Certainly he has the quality. Can produce magical moments. Marvin Phillip knew that and was well stationed. Can't really grudge Cummings that pop at goal from that distance. Certainly, none of his teammates will bet against him. At the time, Philip just betting on himself. Isaiah Garcia again, far from home, just losing out that time to a bit of a slippery surface he was trying to get onto the ball over the top poor lewis intervened to head it away garcia still recovered to snatch it off of the toes of brendan creed and then just slipped up when he thought he were he had retrieved possession two substitutions here for deportivo pf out is Andre Pacheco. The player coming in, Rondell Phillip. Also leaving the field, Mark Ramdeen. And introduced is Omri Baird. Baird at Trinidad and Tobago. Futsal and beach soccer player. I mean, the velodrome surface it's quite sandy but perhaps he'll show show us something a bit different today it's a high boot on the far side referee Williams just taking control of the situation Baird a bit exuberant, just on, excited to get on this score sheet maybe. So as they just try to see out this result, Deportivo point fourteen. Perhaps not see out, <laughs> but see how they can add. This is Hector now trying to return the favor. Onto it and a flash is Nathaniel Garcia. Lays it back now to Marti and Watson. It's back with Hector. And now with Garcia. Watson is into some good real estate. Good shot. Kiza now, but Cornel Thomas gets it away before. Assisting there on the clearance was Kiel. In the meantime, play will be stopped as a player is down in the Real West Fort penalty area following that passage. 
It looks like Davidson. Seems to be indicating maybe a pull or a strain to the back of the right leg. He's being helped to his feet. It's a labored effort. Still rubbing that right hamstring area. Maybe he's pulled something as he was clearing the ball on that previous occasion. Ten minutes left. Match number two of your Saturday afternoon doubleheader here at the Arima Velodrome. As we take another look at what transpired and there he was he just went down off the ball actually if you look here the player Shane Davidson and it looks as though his night is done as he is now being escorted around the touchline gingerly so but they've used all of their substitutions All five of their substitutions have been used Real West Fort, so it means it's either we patch him up and ask him to continue or we play short. Even the professor may not be able to find a solution to that dilemma. As we see, Hutton Hector has also gone down. Perhaps some cramps. Or maybe he wants to get onto the substitutes bench to have a go at Pacheco for stealing one off of his toes earlier. Could have been on a double. Hector. No mind there. Still up 4-0. And well in control of this match against Real West Fort. They do have one substitution left, and it looks as though they won't hesitate to use it. As Hector might be spent. Anderson Morrison looks like the man who's being readied. Confirmation shortly of who he'll replace. Tell though they're going for more Deportivo Point Fortin. As currently both teams are playing with 10. Hutton Hector has come off to receive treatment. He's now being allowed to re-enter. And Shane Davidson for Real Westfort is injured, but doesn't look as though he'll return at all for the remainder of this one. It's a, a Around seven minutes left for Real Westford to see off the threats of the continued threats of Deportivo. Still searching Nathaniel Garcia now. He'll spare this one across goal and it's cleared by Cornel Thomas. Clearance completed by. Kalev Kiel and then it's back with Poon Lewis now in the meanwhile Hector is down again and that is his night he scored what looks to be so far the nail in the coffin for Deportivo Point Fortin their fourth goal in this 4-0 lead. Yeah, really stoic performance from Hutton Hector. Sticking to his task well. Distributing the ball in the simplest of ways. Making football look easy at certain points in this match. He's one of the main reasons for 
Depot PF's domination of a very good Real West 4 team. Once again, just as we saw in the earlier matchup, it's about containment at this stage. Five minutes or so left. Real West Fort won't want to be seen as leaky. Maybe too late for that. They've already conceded four times to this Deportivo Point Fortin team, and it could be. That lead could be extended. Here's Nathaniel Garcia on the charge. Checks back. Support arrives now in the form of the substitute bed. He'll have a crack. Blocked out, charged down by Cordy Thomas. And it's with that man who's perhaps being mistaken on the team sheets. Mistakenly identified as a defender. Isaiah Garcia spends much of his time in the attack for Deportivo. As he was there again. This play eventually curtailed by Johan Cornelius, Cornelius's offside flag. Yeah, we'll have to check Isaiah Garcia after the match. See if he has two more lungs hidden somewhere. And a really rollicking performance from him up and down this right wing. Doesn't look like being tired. There he comes he again. He is again with a good touch. Gets the return from Keza. But it was a bit behind him because I tell you what, had that been a better pass, he would have been clear through on goal and favored to make this 5-0 in Deportivo Point Fortin's favor. That time, Rondell Phillip couldn't sneak Keza in past the Real West Fort defense. But they have possession again. Moving up on three minutes left. Nathaniel Garcia has it. Martin Watson now. It's out to the man who's just come in. Anderson Phillip. And now it's with Garcia. Guess where? Midway into the opposition half. Gets it in one to Kiza. Kiza rolls it off now to Baird. Justin Cornwall is also up there. The opposing wing back. Baird again. Cornwall just trips over it. Perhaps a bit too eager as the return pass came from Omri Baird. Yeah, Depo really salivating at this point. They'll come forward again though. Etienne to Kiza. And there goes the overlap. Kiza goes inside though. Sees the run of Watson. This could be five. It should be five really and truly. But good stuff there from Poon Lewis. To thwart Marty on Watson. And then no look distribution there. As a light drizzle comes down on Arima Velodrome. Tell you what, in stark contrast, it's rain goals here today. 5-1 in the early encounter. AC Port of Spain defeating Maruga FC. And here, Deportivo Point Fortin on the hunt for a fifth themselves. Real West Fort now, Gibson. He slips at the inopportune moment, allowing Cornwall to bring it away. Sprays it now to Anderson Phillip. Deportivo Point Fortin still 
on attack mode. This is Isaiah Garcia now. Gets it back to Watson. Baird. Skips past one, then two. Anderson Phillip joins in now. He'll cross it. And a bicycle. Could have anticipated that one. Cornwall didn't make the connection though. And now they recycle possession. That's Deportivo. Watson. They'd love to have five here. And I'll tell you what, if I see Isaiah Garcia getting onto the score sheet, I won't begrudge him that at all. As we see Creed escorting that one out of play. And it's a straightforward case, says referee Quincy Williams. No added time, really, at the end of 90. In this one, it's Deportivo point Fortin four. Real West Fort United nil. Yeah, and a really virtuoso performance there from Deportivo PF. Commanding from start to finish. Began their scoring in the fourth minute and ended up with a 4 0 win over Real West Fort. As we look at the highlights. Poon Lewis let down there by his defense. And the penalty to make it two goals on the evening. For that man, Akinola Gregory, 40th minute. Isaiah Garcia full of running all afternoon. You'll see more on that ball a little later. Andre Pacheco with this pop from distance, right into Poon Lewis's hands. Good, good running there from the number 10, Jordan Riley. Then the Hector Pacheco combination. It's a good effect to make it 3 0. It's a good ball between Pacheco and Hector. Great turn by Hector, showing all his experience. Pacheco just taking it at the very last hurdle grabbing the glory this ball to Josima Belgrave looked to be West Fort's opportunity back into the match on the hour mark but they struggled to get that ball out of midfield at certain points this should have been Riley's moment of glory and you can tell he knew exactly how bad that was should have been their fourth Mark Ramdeen thrown in the side of the West Ford defense earning a foul free kick by Patrick o had to be saved by Poon Lewis through the crowd spotting it well great save from him then Isaiah Garcia setting up the final goal of this evening's encounter, finding Hutton Hector again overlapping, popping up at that far post was Hutton Hector. 4 0 at that point, almost five. Good defense there from West Fort. as Depo PF record their third clean sheet in a row, a third win in a row. It's been a good evening for them. And now we'll hear from the man on the receiving end of today's defeat, Real Westford coach, the professor, Ron Laffery. Westford United. Mr. Lafore, we saw you make some wholesale changes today. Um, what was the intent behind it and um, where did it go wrong this afternoon? Let, let me say, the changes, I was forced upon to make the changes, the reason being, you know, I try changing the two steppers, the previous steppers before, because to me, you know, there were tacklers, there wasn't markers. So I decided to put in two younger versions inside it. But the younger version, you know, it, you can see it lack experience, right? For instance, like, um, 
you can see even a goal in three minutes. You know, so that is that is that issue we have, we have again. We go try to we go try to put it together. We go try to plug it. You know, but as I mentioned, you know, I still soul searching with this team. Eh? This this is a, this is a nice team. Don't, don't give us on us, right? Don't, don't, don't give us on us. I still soul searching with them. Whereby, hey, we trying to get the best possible eleven going forward. But for now, you know, it it, it happening for us. But but don't don't give up. We, we'll we'll keep trying. Yeah. Um. So looking forward, looking ahead, you know, the first round coming to an end. Therefore, you know, um, would we see you continue to tinker with this team, or do you have a clearer idea now after eight games of what you want to do and how you want to um, line up? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have a nice bit, you know, because this is this is game number eight, right? And I haven't used the same starting team from one to eight. So I have a clear picture in my mind whereby what this is I really want to go forward, whereby you could be more competitive in the second rounds. A difficult, difficult loss last weekend after leading um, and a shutout today. What's 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 the recovery going to be like? What's the, the, the comeback going to be like? Well, the comeback will be like, again, let, let me say first of all, uh, this, this Ibo Tibo team, as far as I see, this is one of the best running teams that I see. All right, so my recovery is... Uh, Listen to the snap boy. We'll take a look at them and see if we can idealize them, if we can pattern them, whereby you know we can look to come up to that particular standard where they are right now. Alright, the professor Ron Lafore, the man in charge of Real Westford uh, on the losing end today, Fogel mm. Sunil mm. against Deportivo Point Fortin. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. The professor there, waxing poetic. Even, Even he can learn from, from this Deport team. team. This team, team has conceded eleven goals in their last three matches. It's been a tough evening for him. On the other side, it's been a great evening for Salvo and Francis. They record their third win in a row. Ten goals in three matches, haven't conceded one in those three matches. And now we'll hear from the head coach for Depot PF, Salvo and Francis. Deportivo point fourteen, four nil winners here today, and certainly it is. Uh, testament to the momentum that this team has been building. Head coach Kester Cornwall, your thoughts on today's proceedings? I mean, the results, excellent results, you know. We've been preparing for this game, you know, for this whole week here. And uh, certain things that we worked on in the session leading up to this game, I can actually see the uh, players actually putting the effort in. So, again, congratulations to our team on this three points tonight. When you have the likes of Marvin Phillip, Nathaniel Garcia, Pacheco, Hector running through the spine of your team. How difficult really is it to coach and prepare for a game from week to week? I mean, uh, with those guys that I just mentioned, uh, they make our job a lot easier. As the coaches, you know, we don't be on the pitch. The players be out on the pitch. So we have a lot of leaders in the team. And even with some of the youths, the, the, the leaders, for example, Marvin, Hector, Pacheco, they are doing a wonderful job. And, you know, we just want to command them that they could continue to inspire and encourage the rest of the team. What were the areas you wanted to exploit against this Real West Fort team today and um, how, how do you think you're, you're able to execute? Ah, excellent. The game plan was for us to actually attack through the wings, right? Because most of the time from watching past games from them, we were seeing they were giving up a lot of space behind their wing backs. So we actually wanted to exploit in that area and I think you know, we were successful in that this afternoon. Congrats to you, head coach Cornwall, but just before we let you leave, Next match, you know, uh, tell us what is the plan of attack, you know, as you, this first round comes to an end. Uh, I mean, next match, the goal remains the same, three points, you know, because the journey is a long journey from point, and anytime we leave point for 10 is to make the people from point for 10 proud. So, on to the next one, aiming for three points. Thank you, head coach Kester Cornwall of the defense, the rather the Deportivo point 14 team, 4 0 winners today against Real Westport United. All right, thank you very much. We heard from Kester Cornwall, coach of Depot for PF. PF. He spoke about a long journey. It's been a long journey to this match week eight for Depot PF, for all the teams in this tournament, really. One man who doesn't seem to be running out of gas is tonight's player of the match, Isaiah Garcia. He, he was not a goal scorer, but involved in almost everything positive uh, going forward for Deportivo Point Fortin. How do you feel about your, your performance tonight? Well, all thanks, honor, glory, and praise to God first and foremost. And then to the hard work and dedication that I've been putting in behind closed doors. And I'm just thankful 
for the opportunity to shed some light on the work I've been putting in. Thankful to, for, towards all my teammates because we've started this tournament on the back end due to a lot of challenges that no one knows about. Two weeks preparation before the tournament, no match fitness, no physical fitness and a lot, a lot, a lot of challenges. So this is just a testament of what we've been doing and how hard we've been working. And once again, I'm very thankful. If this is you at not peak match fitness, I'd hate to see you uh, fully fit, Isaiah. You've been bombing up and down the wings of this Ascension tournament so far. Tell us about, you know, what are your aspirations? First of all, what is your preparation like from week to week? Well, as I said, a lot of hard work behind closed doors. No one knows how hard I work. No one knows how hard I work. And it's just, again, my aspirations, of course, aiming to be back on the national team. I hope this performance here and previous performances shed some light towards the coach, Mr. Angus Eve, and he sees the work that I've been putting in, and I deserve to be there, you know? And this is just, it just comes, it comes back all to preparation and how you treat, because everyone knows who's around me can tell you I'm a true professional. So football, it's sacrosanct for me. I eat, sleep, drink, breathe football. So this is my everything, the passion, the joy, the everything. This is my profession. This is what I love and my God-given talent. And no one is going to outwork me on and off the field. Really moving words there from Isaiah Garcia, our choice as man of the match this evening, helping Deportivo point forth into a 4 0 win over Real West Fort United to Garcia and to the point forth in players and all of their supporters. We certainly wish them a safe journey back down to the Southern Borough. But for now, match week eight here at the Arima Velodrome, game two of the doubleheader ending in Deportivo point forth in its favor. And of course, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for another heated encounter from the St. James Barracks. It's Central Soccer World taking on Central FC. Hope to see you there on behalf of Jovan Ravello and the entire crew of this Ascension Tournament Saturday team. Do have a good night.